Darius Cooks, also known as your local scammer. You are, you know, you gay, growing up in Chicago, you just end up being with a tribe of people. I don't know, it's really hard to explain. I, it might be different now, but when I was growing up, there were crews. We had people we hung with, right? Anyway, and I hung with people like, you remember Calvin, Lavelle, you know, those are people that I used to hang with back in the day, and you see what happened now, especially with randomness of veil. We ain't heard hide nor have him, have we? We ain't heard hide nor have him, have we? Come to think of it, let me not bring his name up, because let me tell you something. He probably, child, he ready to, where's the expose? Where is the expose? So they don't know what's about to go on. You just attack them. You just attack them, mother. What did I say? I said, you better do what I said to do. Did they think you're crazy? If they think you're crazy, they'll just walk away slowly like that. What's up, good people? Let me know that you can hear me in the chat by typing either Original Legion or expose here as in the expose is here the expose is here or original legion because as i was putting this together earlier today i was like you know what i got my own who the f did i become friends with story literally the only difference is this person is still around and they're a predator with uh everyone else um, so we have finally arrived. Literally, it's been year. It's been actually, I've never shared the story, never shared the story um on this platform. The details of the business that Darius Crooks, myself, and my friend used to be his friend until he scammed us, <laughs> but the person who is still my friend. Um, I'm going to break it down. I'm going to break it down. And the expose is here because you know how Lavelle operate. Veil, Veil B comes with the receipts. This is the original. I don't know. I got that in a way. This is my original folder of the documents related to the lunch machine business. All that, y'all. All that. I can't put it too close because there's some personal stuff in there too. All of this, including, I'm getting into it too quick, including letters to and from the attorneys, fax covers, as you saw, and the email exchanges between Darius Crooks and the other two business partners, I being one of them. And, right, Michelle, <laughs> yes, receipts, you know how we do it. And I have a few of the times of Darius Crooks telling his false narrative on purpose. When you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. On purpose, I allowed her to keep telling that fake ass story so that I can then come with this and show everybody for real, for real, how she lie. But before we get into all that, hold on, let me get to the 
to the chat. Thank you, Marianne, who's in the back. I think pressure's on her way. Um, hey to uh, Michelle ATL and Brown. Definitely check out the blog goddess if you're not subscribed to her YouTube channel. We got Linda, Elite, Chocolate, Destiny, Don, um, Sandy, Margin, and everybody else. I'm sorry, y'all, because I, <laughs> I went on a rant real quick. <laughs> And everyone else who's let me know that you can hear me in the chat. Um, also, thank you to those who have hit that like button as of yet already and who have shared this video. Also to the, um, my folks over there on the uh, Instagram side, we're also with simulcasting. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube. Hey to everybody on all them platforms. Share and like on all them platforms is greatly appreciated in advance. And thank you to the 83% of you on the YouTube side who have already, uh, no, you knew the assignment and you did it already. And I appreciate that because class is in session tonight. Class is in session tonight. So uh, today what I'm primarily worked on was trying to edit some of that footage that I have of the multiple times that Darius Crooks has told this story and his elaborate um, way of giving the cliff notes of something that has 50 something documents and all kind of exchanges in it. And uh, over a year of, of situations connected to it and then the years of lying that he did, he giving it as like a little 20 minute story time. I'm finna sit here and break it down. I think we got three parts y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I hope y'all don't mind. But as I was trying to put this together, I'm like, I can't finish this tonight. I, I Even two, three hours, I cannot finish this tonight. It's about two, three parts because it's so many layers to this. And that's one of the reasons I just didn't really care to do this story, to be honest. But uh, Darius Crooks went live last night uh, telling this story, um, his version of it. I don't think I. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Poll question I'm putting over over here is, have you heard Darius Crooks tell this his version, his version? of the lunch machine story have you heard darius crooks tell his version of the lunch machine story not not with nan receipt ever not with nan piece of documented proof ever all off the top of his head mixed up ass dates uh stories slightly changing details off each time he tell a story but the overall, him becoming a victim in the story and him becoming a victor in the story, that part always stays the same. Have you ever heard that story? Oh, wow. Interesting. You know what this tells me, though? 70-something <laughs> percent of y'all ain't flying monkey hags, so y'all don't be on his IG lies, hearing them lies all that. Right, Mel? A trilogy. That's right. We got a trilogy tonight. Well, we're starting it. Y'all just don't know how bad I did not want to, like, I just don't care about this story. I don't I don't care to sit here and rehash old shit. <laughs> I just don't. Like that's just not me. Although he wants to paint that narrative that oh, I'm so angry, I'm so hurt, I'm so bitter, I've never gotten over it. No, girl. <laughs> you out here scamming people and being a predator and I knew you way back when and I just watched you grow into a monster and I can't take it cuz for one, I believe in um standing up to bullies and you become a bully and i believe in fighting against injustices and you are nothing is just about you that's why i speak out i can give a fuck about the few thousand dollars you stole from me to, um 10 years ago or whatever it was i don't care girl i made more than that i had more than that i had it for you to steal <laughs> Shit. think about that i had it for you to steal and still kept ticking. Loser. Psychopath. Okay. Um, 78. I know I'm warm already. God damn it. <laughs> I thought I was gonna have to warm up a little bit. I need to back it up a little bit. Just back it up a little bit. Uh 78% of you said you have heard Darius Crooks. I'm sorry, 78% of you said you have not heard Darius Crooks tell his version of the lunch machine story. Well, you're in luck because I have it recorded multiple <laughs> multiple occasions. And we're going to watch that as well. I don't know how deep we'll get into that tonight. That's why we're going to have multiple parts. Because tonight I'm going to give an overview of the situation, 
show a few of my receipts, and then we'll see how far we get, how, what time it is, and you know, we'll go from there. Um, the other poll question I'm going to put out here, because I just want to see how many of you can understand um, my position in this, because I, it's like, my hand is kind of, it's been forced to have to finally say something in regards to this piece of the story. Like, I don't mind exposing him when it comes to everything else he's doing to everybody else, but it's like he keep lying on me. And also what I, I said, you know, God works in mysterious ways because for the three years that I've been covering him and the 10 years before that, I didn't even say nothing. Um, he has been retelling this story and lying on me and trying to paint me out to be the kind of person that I am not. For some reason, I couldn't, every time I would start putting this, it took me a while to find this. It took me a while. I had a couple, I got a couple houses. It took me a while to find this. Finally found this. And when I did, I was like, oh, great, I found it. And then I started going through and I was like, I don't feel like doing this. <laughs> and some was like, this the time ain't now. The time ain't now. Don't worry about it. And then we fast forward to yesterday and it hit me. Well, as we were, we've been talking about the three kings, and I think I may have mentioned it. It hit me that what we just watched play out with the three kings, how Darius Crooks uh, took over. He wasn't interested in being a partner. He has said uh, on his lives that he does not play well with others uh, at all. He does not. We know this to be true. I knew this to be true. And he proved through that experience how he will cause chaos, make the situation not work, not want to be equals or or even give someone their fair compensation or acknowledgement or anything like that. And as soon as they have an opinion or a backbone, he sabotages it and walks away from the situation. Hence, the, the Three Kings tour just being canceled. Then what he has to do, and he, again, he's been doing it way back when, back in 2011. He then has to turn the people he victimized into the predators. They have to become the villain in the story. So we're watching this part play out now. Ten years ago, it was me. It was three of us. Those were, I think, did I? Oh, I changed, I changed the title. The thumbnail I was going to put there. Oh, maybe I put it in the, the description. The original three kings. I am a part of the original three kings. It was myself. It was Darius's best friend from high school, who he is no longer friends with due to the situation of him scamming us, and Darius Crooks. We were the original three kings. He has never been in a, a three-part business partnership since back then. The next time we see it is the Three Kings tour. And I'm sitting there watching this ish play out almost in tandem to the way that it happened with us. And y'all going to hear that. Y'all going to hear the details. But now you see how Jeremy is becoming the villain in Darius Crook's narrative. Now we watched it play out and we watched Darius Crooks create the chaos and we watched Jeremy like I can't God is not the author of confusion. My brand ain't dirty. I don't have no people making videos about me. This ain't worth it. My gut told me I shouldn't have stepped into the the Satan's den. He backs out gracefully like uh -uh, I can't do it. Now all of a sudden Jer it's Jeremy's fault that it was canceled. Darius Crooks the one canceled it. Darius Crooks what out of one side of his neck he's saying is Jeremy's quitting that that canceled it. The other side of his neck he's saying, Well, I know what sales should be, and it wasn't selling out. So basically, he called it quits because it wasn't selling out. Make up your goddamn man. Make up your goddamn man. Just like with the lunch machine. Let me show y'all a picture because I forgot. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Let me do that poll question. Let me close this one out. Have you ever had someone lie on you repeatedly and create a false narrative? 72% of y'all, okay, we y'all, <laughs> you see me. Now imagine it on a public platform. Imagine somebody getting on their Facebook lying and talking about you've been harassing uh they bumpy face boyfriend that you don't even don't even know of, <laughs> that you ain't paying no attention to. Imagine them getting on there with fake tears, reading a goddamn script off of the, a laptop, acting like they're all distraught and they breaking up their relationship because you were harassing. 
in hopes that for one to discredit you and make you seem like some crazy stalker, but also in hopes that people will flying monkeys will come out and harass you and call you names. Thankfully, for one, I'm covered. For two, they ain't that goddamn crazy. <laughs> they ain't that goddamn crazy because they ain't came over here like that. And they bet not. So anyway, imagine going through that. And you're like, what the hell? And the, the video got a uh, hundred and some thousand views in one day. And you you like, okay, this is Okay, forget it. This video ain't getting monetized. It's not getting monetized. Hit them like buttons, uh, cash app. <laughs> Hit that. Um, if y'all want the real, y'all want the real. This it. Hit that cash app. Hit the super chats. Hit the super stickers. Cause I I gotta I just gotta get this out and be done with it. Be done with it. Cause I didn't even want to talk about it. <laughs> so fuck it. I want to talk. I don't want to have to watch. I want to do this YouTube script shit. <laughs> I want to be a talk. So imagine you sitting there. Are you still friends with uh, Eric? I ain't never been friends with no fucking Eric. Eric ain't my type of person. He's just as messy as crooks. Anyway, he groomed crooks. <laughs> oh, am I getting too wild? <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, put that on the screen for me, Marianne, if you can, uh, Sonya Super Chat. Thank you so much, uh, Sonya, for the super sticker. I appreciate you. Yeah, get your popcorn. Get your drinks. It's one of them nights. <laughs> this is a Patreon night, actually. <laughs> this is Patreon. <laughs> so um, imagine somebody goes on a platform, and this happened over a year ago. We're gonna, I'm going to show you a little clip, and then we'll, we'll revisit it later because I, I can only pull so much stuff at one time. Um, imagine somebody gets on right vanessa that explains why they're still friends i learned that the the long it took me a while to realize that i used to think that darius was cut from a different cloth than them and then i realized he's the fucking same as them and that is why he has been friends with him also he doesn't respect y'all he doesn't think y'all are intelligent and that is why he's never done any business deals with y'all that is why y'all still friends you know you want to know how to end a friendship with darius crooks Get in business with her. Get in business with Scam Scamyonce because she doesn't believe in being fair no matter what depth of relationship you have with her. It's all about the money. All, th all bets are off when money is involved. She's a greedy snake. Not, not she, oh, she just want a little more. No, that bitch want all of it. <laughs> she wants it all and she wants to destroy you. It becomes like a gladiator fight for her. And then if you don't, and if you're blindsided, that's, you don't know it's coming. You're like, we've been friends. We ain't never did. We don't harm each other. Ain't never had no issues. Uh, thank you so much for the super sticker, G. Wilson. Appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, 72, 77% rather of y'all have had that happen. So you understand what it's like. And like I said, imagine it being magnified to somebody doing it on a national platform hundreds of thousands of people are hearing this false narrative about you. Now, more than that, I don't know how many, because I ain't seen the video in forever, but as of that time frame, it was well into the hundreds of thousands, a hundred and something thousand people saw that video, fakeness, and they reaching out, oh my God, woo, 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 crooks, woo, 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 I can't believe he trying to destroy your relationship. And then that girl got on that by the next day, talking about they ain't, they ain't really break up, they back together. I knew it was act. I knew it was an act. I did a video on it. If y'all know what the hell I'm talking about, because I ain't going to revisit all that. Uh, thank you so much for the super sticker. Uh, SKS912 and KHG. KHG. Uh, thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate y'all. Um, so, yes, had to deal with that. I did put out a video with that. I usually don't respond to his to her shenanigans. Uh, but that one I did because, again, well over 100 some thousand people and a bunch of people reaching out. Veil, veil, veil. Um, OK, so let's see. How should I do this? Should I? I'm going to give you an overview of the lunch machine story. Then we're going to get into the actual receipts and then we'll get into the video. Maybe I'll do a stop and go with the video. I don't know. I'm going to figure that out in a minute. So overview of the lunch machine. Now, for those of you who don't know. 
because I got to get, get a little little background information because Darius Crooks, again, creating the narrative, will use the information uh, of the fact of who we were to each other at one point in life. He will use that in order to twist the narrative. So I've known Darius Crooks since he was 19 years old. I knew him from the age of 19 till about 29, going on 30. I don't know if it's 30 or not. So from 19 to about 29, 30 or whatever, I knew Darius Crooks. When we originally met, we dated. We met actually on the dating app and all that. There's a, I got a whole story time on that. Uh, in my earlier videos, you want to see that, you can go look at that. Eventually, I might tell the story again in, the, in a newer, fresher way with some other details. Right now, that's what y'all got. Um, we dated for nearly two years. It was nothing major. He was 19. I was maybe 25. He's a lazy lay. I don't know what to say. He's boring. He's a lazy lay. Uh, he's a narcissist. That was the reason I broke up with him. Uh, I ghosted him slowly. He drove. He went to New Jersey for a camp. He used to go to like a, a, a LGBT camp or something uh, every year. And he would be like their cook. And that one year he was heading there. I was like, yeah, I'm going to slowly pull away. Because just like you see him do the IG lies where he's um, getting on 15 times a day and every night before he go to bed, he got to occupy their time and get on there and get high and get silly and all that. That was my life. <laughs> that was my life. That was my life. And I got tired of it because it was always about him. And so I ghosted him. And that's how we, we broke up. Fast forward. A year or so later, um, we ended up, uh, he hit me up through an app like um, online. We ended up, uh, thank you so much, Chocolate, for the super sticker. I appreciate you, friend. Um, we ended up hanging out and we became friends. Nothing ever happened after that. We were never romantic at all. And then we were friends for nearly a decade after that, like brothers, like hanging out, crew, all that kind of stuff. No and traveling together, we were literally like brothers. Um, so now he, when he tells the story, I'm, I got evidence of this. When he tells the story, now I'm just the ex. Not the friend of almost a decade and on top of that business partner, but just the ex. Like now I'm just a, a crazy ex. So that's the background on that. So when you run, as we go through this, you're going to see some pieces where... Um, where he's saying, and my ex, and you're going to be like, who the ex? Who, who the? Yeah, that's supposed to be me. Again, that's creating a narrative so people will dismiss what I'm saying here. There's actually, um, I have this here. Narcissistic fact, because pay attention to this. Narcissists will always conceal any information about themselves that doesn't fit their delusional narrative of how amazing or, and perfect they are. They will go to great lengths to hide their misdeeds and crimes just for this purpose. And did I ever put that in? I don't think I put this in. Somebody said, this was on um, Twitter. Someone um, tweeted this to me and they said, well, they tweeted in general. And they were saying, Vale knows too much information about him. He has to create a negative narrative so that when Vale speaks about the situation, the hive will have it um, preset that Vale is bitter. So it's all by design. It's all, thank you so much, Tasha, 50. It's all by design. Uh, and they go on to say, you can see who the bitter one is. <laughs> Funky feet looks like uh, he's pushing 60 and stressed out. That is true. Age. Age. I got the glasses on. They do age me a little bit, but we got uh, Scampa and me. And I'm six years older than him. Scampa and me. Yes. That's that's uh, stress, stress eating. That's uh, Taco Tuesday chest meat. <laughs> that's what that is. That's uh, sociopathic behaviors. Also, for those who like to, because uh, he tells the narrative that I haven't gotten over here, him or something. I don't know how you don't get over a person you dumped and then was just friends with, like, you know, brotherhood, siblings for almost a decade. I don't know how you become uh, obsessed with them. I don't understand how that works. 
But this is how, well, actually, he didn't even look like this now that I think about it. Um, thank you so much to Michelle F Philly, Philly for your uh for your super sticker friend. I appreciate you. Darius Chris looked a little similar to this. He was between that and Let me pull it in. Did I not pull it in? Oh, I didn't pull it in. Don't worry about it. But he was between, oh no, yeah, yeah, here it is. He was between this and this when I last saw him. So again, how I turn into a stalker for that or this or any combination of is beyond me. <laughs> That's where the gaslighting comes in. Thank you so much, um, Margin. That's where the gaslighting comes in. So we're friends. Again, told you the start of it. 19 to 20, 21 or whatever, we were dating. His 19, not mine. We then become like brothers. We're traveling. We're hanging out. Um, just being friends, doing what friends do. Then. Fast forward to year probably eight or so, eight or nine, we get into, uh, he he presents me, he reaches out to me and he says, hey, uh, I want to take you and the other friend, I'm going I'm to name him, G, I want to take you and G to um, out to 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 uh, this Italian restaurant up north, north side of Chicago. I got something I want to talk to y'all about. Now, at this point, Darius Crooks had recently opened his cupcake gallery um, shop, the the bakery. It was probably open two to three months or so, not very long. I was also a part of that process. I helped uh, Darius Crooks uh, with his investor pitch meeting again it's so many layers that's why i'm like y'all this is parts and th just this alone is three parts but i can't go down these these rabbit holes with all the other pieces some of it i've already talked about so you got to watch my old stuff if you haven't seen it um so anyway he's having investor meetings so i'm looking for places for him to have the investor meetings riding around with him he didn't have a car uh at i don't think he had a car during that time so I was driving him around at times. I was taking him to the grocery store. I was being used. I didn't really see that till later, but I was being used. Um, so through his investor meetings, I was uh, at those investor meetings, helping out, doing whatever, setting up, putting things together because he is not detail oriented at all. LaQuinty, you found that out, didn't you? Didn't you, girl? Didn't you? Found out a lot of other stuff too, but you found out he's not detail oriented. He's big picture thinking. And then he hopes the other pieces fall in place. So anyway, um, he's doing that. Um, I helped him with that. When the Cupcake Gallery was uh, getting ready to open, he asked me to build a display case for the cupcakes, but also a wall to separate the, this extra dining space and make it where he had more space for the kitchen, like storage space and stuff. I ended up doing that for him. That was our first time that we had anything money related like an issue a money related uh issue prior to that we had no issues when we would go out to dinner sometimes he would pay sometimes i would pay i don't even know if we really split the bill to be honest i don't know if we really ever did money was just never an issue in our relationship finances at all in our friendship or the relationship <laughs> it just wasn't so when it came to negotiating that i saw his ruthless negotiating tactics. And like I told y'all, yes, was that yesterday where he had the story about the uh, interior designer of the greens and gravy restaurant who he and she ended up charging him less than her fee for her design services. On top of that, she brought in a contractor, Darius Crooks, when she got the work done, did not pay her her balance, also didn't pay the contractor who she brought in. So she ended up paying the contractor. She ended up suing Darius Crooks. Now, he got her to go down on her fee because he promised her exposure in exchange for her fee. That was the same thing he did to me with the cupcake gallery. I was like, okay, fine. 
Did I ever get that exposure? No, <laughs> not at all. And back then, just so you know, I did, again, so many layers to this. Back then, I had two businesses. One of my businesses, I was a contractor uh, and uh, remodeling, interior remodeling. Doing it since I was 19 years old. No, hell, doing it since I was five years old. We were one, if we want to count when I was holding the nails while my grandfather was on the roof. <laughs> I like to count that time period, too. Because while the other kids were playing, I was like, oh, that go granddad with some two by fours on the truck, on the back of the truck. Let me go find, uh, follow him down the dri uh, driveway. I want to help. I want to help. So since five years old, I'm going to stick to that. But officially, at the age of 19, I got into construction. So I got, I got, and I still have those skills. So I had those skills, and he utilized those skills. Not only at the cupcake shop, because I had painted his apartments, decorated them. If you look at his earlier YouTube videos, that's my fucking work. Those are my stripes on the wall. That backsplash that is uh, intricately painted to make it look like something other than that white bullshit he had going on. I did that. That's my work. Guess how much I charged my friend? Zero. For any of it. Gave him my decor out of my home. Well, extra stuff I had. <laughs> Gave him out of my home. Vases, pictures, all kind of stuff. Clocks. He got my cross. I had a nice cross I gave because I thought it looked great over his door. I was like, but that's mine. I said, I'm taking that back. Never got it back. Did all that. But now I'm a jealous uh, person who hates his success. What, girl? <laughs> what? No, I'm still the same giving person I was. So, um, so anyway, okay. So we, we got all that established. Cupcake gallery is open, blah, blah, blah. So then he comes to me. He's asking me to come to this dinner with him and G. I'm like, okay, fine. We sit down. We're at this Italian restaurant. And he then starts talking about how well things are going with the Cupcake Gallery. We still, to this day, don't really know how the Cupcake Gallery did. And I don't think it did as great as he claims because he walked away from the business. And the successful business, you don't walk away from. And even if you're, like, emotionally spent or all of that, your mental health, this or that, da 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 you're still going to, like, try to sell the business. It's successful. You don't just walk away from it. You built a brand. Walked away from it, girl. Just walked out. Never came back. <laughs> huh? The lies. It's the lies for me. So anyway, he's talking about this business. At the time, all we know about the Cupcake Gallery is what our friend tells us. And what we, you know, we would see stuff on social media. Him, We just sold out. We selling out. Oh, the line is around the corner. Crazy part was when I would go up there to visit him, there was never anybody in there. <laughs> Every once in a while, I could, we, he and I would literally sit in his office. He would be on Hootsuite. Uh, scheduling posts, I guess lying, talking about how busy it was <laughs> in hindsight. I didn't know that at the time. But he lying, talking about how busy it is in the store, trying to buzz up uh, buzz up customers. And then we'd be sitting there and every 20, 30, 40 minutes, the, somebody might come in and he'd go get them a couple cupcakes and come sit back down <laughs> with me in office. <laughs> so he, you know, but again, it's my friend. I ain't like, what you on, nigga? Oh, my God, I think he's a scammer. I ain't on that. He's never scammed me. I've known him almost a decade. I had never heard of him stealing and things like that. Later on, I found out there was stuff he would do to other people. And then it made sense why so many people didn't like him. But I didn't know those things back then. I was I was protected. I was kind of in a, a different kind of bubble. So have this this um this dinner. He said, and it was on a weeknight. I remember it was like nighttime. It was on a weeknight. We met him up north. And he then says, you know, business is doing great. I have all these plans. Now, I, some of y'all have seen that Millionaire by 30 video that I play. It's uh, a part of one of my intros um, to one of the video. Well, in the earlier videos, it was my intro where he's like, and I declare by the age of 30, I'm going to be a millionaire. That. He all of that happened all in the same time frame. That was the inception of it. So um, I knew about some of the, the business ideas he had. I knew about a cupcake mix. 
I knew about him talking about a grocery delivery service. I didn't know in depth about it, but I had heard that brainchild and whatever else at the time. So he's now giving us his pitch. He's talking about, you know, Darius Crooks, he got the gift of gab. So he's doing that. He's sales pitching us. And he's saying, you know, we, y'all my two closest people, Eric, <laughs> Eric from the West Side, he ain't choose you. Why he ain't choose you? Because he don't think you're smart enough and he knew you didn't have no money. Anyway, so, and the rest of y'all too, the crew that still rides with him. I'm just telling y'all what it is. Why he ain't pick y'all for the three kings? Nah. <laughs> Pay attention. He's going to pick people who he think has it, some money. Well, now I don't know about the money as much, but he, he has to pick people he feels like he can get something from. They have something to offer him. The, all the, the current friends he got, they, they good enough for gagging. Reading and gagging with him. But he don't, not business. No, nah. no. Nah. Anyway, and stay out of business with him. The way y'all can maintain the, the semblance of a friendship with a sociopath. So... He um, so he's talking to us and then he brings up this food truck idea. And so he's telling us how great they are and what they're doing in the city, da, 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 this and that. Now, what I learned during the conversation was that he and G had had some kind of conversation about it. I got pulled into it as like, well, he's, you know, close to us and also, well, really close to Darius only because of the. The other friend was Darius's friend who I got to know over time, but we still weren't G and I never were on the phone talking to each other. We didn't go anywhere by ourselves. We only time I saw him was when Darius was around kind of thing. So we weren't friends. And so uh, they pulled me in. And what I told Darius at the time, my whole thing was this. This is nice. Darius says, um, just like he said the other night with the Q&A, too. Um, you know, I thought I'd bring somebody on, bring, you know. Uh, I knew what I was doing and I was like, I want to take people with me, blah, blah, blah. Take my people with me. So I'm like, OK, fine. But I don't have the bandwidth because I'm running two businesses. And I said, but I can be a silent investor because, again, at the time, all my thinking was it's my friend. I want to support him. I do want him to succeed. If it's about him having the extra money because he didn't have it like that at all back then. Fine, I'll, I'll give him this money. As long as I can just give you the money and you claim this going to do this and do that, fine, perfect, excellent. But I ain't got no time for it. So long story short, we get into the deal. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure, I already know. <laughs> $4,000 was the original per person, was the original investment amount. And... Then that was supposed to, you know, get get the truck going. He was like, you know, he liked low startup costs and stuff. I knew that already. So I'm like, OK, fine. If you're saying you can get that going for this, he got the, how much the truck going to cost, all this stuff figured out. So fine. Next thing you know, we are going to the um, to the dealership where where we where he's found a truck. It's a box truck. Oh, It's a box truck at that time. This box truck, and well, I don't have the best pictures because this was back in 2000, was this 2009 or 2010? I think we started in nine. Hold on, let me look. Because I got the receipts unlike him. <laughs> let me look at when we applied for, I was incorporated in 2011. I feel like that was, it was in 2010. Wait, what? You, what? No, it might have been early 2011. No, no, I got 2010 here. Yeah, so in like 2010, that's when we started this process. I can't remember the dates of when the truck was purchased. I don't have that. I don't have that over here. We go to a dealership. It's like, you know, a car, like a commercial side corner, you know, kind of rinky dink uh, car lot. Got this bread truck truck. It looks like it used to be an old hostess truck or whatever. It was all white. Um, it ran <laughs> was, the, was the key. If I'm not mistaken, we pay six thousand dollars for it. Now, we're sitting there because he tells the story that he bought this truck all by himself. We weren't nowhere to be found. We just gave him, uh, you know, our capital and he can do whatever he wanted. Lies. Lies. He wanted us to be there and we were there. And so we go there to look at the truck. 
Now he's involving us, but then later he's like, he don't want us involved. It's, it's very crazy. So we go there and when it was time to sign the bill of sale and all of that stuff for the truck, I was like stepping back slowly. I'm stepping back slowly because I'm like, I said I wanted to be a silent partner. I don't want my name on this stuff because you got to keep in mind the stuff I've told y'all before about crooks is that, again, I dated him. When I dated him, he got evicted from two apartments during that time period and got one car repossessed. And as I knew him through those other years, he got a couple more evictions. <laughs> he would just mysteriously be moving from a different apartment like real quick. They were evictions and their, their list. I, already, I have them too. Like they're official evictions. So he would get evicted and, and all kind of stuff. And I knew he, and he had filed bankruptcy at that point, two times. I don't know how many more since then, but at least two times. So for me, I was like, I don't want to be attached to him financially, anything he's kind of, you know, in charge of. So I decide that I don't want to sign the bill to sell or anything because I'm having now I'm, I'm, I'm on a hook for it. However, when it came to the registration, I have no idea. And, and this was my thinking that I thought, G, the other friend would step up because I didn't want Darius Crooks to have it all in his name. Like, I'm smart enough to know, like, OK, wait a minute. But I was like, we didn't discuss that before. It just should have went in the business name, but it was in the moment. And so the other friend didn't um, sign the bill of sale, but I got the truck registered. He will claim that everything was in his name. That is a lie. That's a lie. And guess how I can tell you? <laughs> guess how I can tell you? That's in the way. Guess how I can tell you? Because I got it right here. Anyway, um, so fast forward. Now we have the truck. Now all of a sudden, I'm getting tapped on the shoulder, and I'm like, okay. I'm like, see y'all later. We got the truck. All right, let me know how things go out there. <laughs> and it's like, well, now Crooks is telling me, well, we got to get the truck built out to become a food truck because it's not a food truck. It was just a, a, a bread truck, just raw on the inside, nothing in the inside, a delivery truck. Now it needs a sink. It needs a, a, a workstation. Uh, and there were certain requirements to have all of that stuff in there. And and um, I'm like, am, should I be read? Just got a notification say the union is starting. Do not leave or stay. I'm staying with my crew right now. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, so, so now I'm getting tapped on the shoulder about that and i'm like okay so what now well guess who has the skills because he's like oh in order for us to hire somebody it'll be however many like twenty thousand fifteen thousand whatever it was going to be something crazy some astronomical amount and of course now i don't have he doesn't have the money for that so it's like well now we got a, a, a truck and it we need a four food truck but it can't get built out can you do the work and I'm like, but I wasn't trying to do the work. But now I got money and now I gave my money up. So whatever the conversation, however he twisted it, it was kind of like my arm was twisted in the sense of, OK, so now my four thousand just gone. <laughs> I was supposed to be an angel investor. But now if I don't get involved, I can just say goodbye to my four thousand uh, because it's too expensive to hire out. So I got bamboozled into now I'm working to build out the truck. Going to Home Depot. Oh, you want to know how this truck got that color green? How did well and the, this white of the truck ain't the color it came. Now, don't mind this. Now, you see, I painted the truck, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Let me just get to it. I painted the truck with oil based house paint because <laughs> I was like, I'm we didn't have the money to take it to a body shop and um all of that. So I painted it, took it to my um rental property put it in the backyard and I painted it. Now, the reason why this green here is so dark, hunter green, I picked the color. I decided to put the greens, you know, in the middle and the front. Uh, you can't see the side because I don't have a no good picture of the side. 
But in the back, you want to know why this uh, ugly ass green is down here at the bottom? Because that was the uh, I ran out of the other green paint. And so I was like, forget it. <laughs> I had that left over in one of my rental properties. I don't even know what room I painted that ugly color. Or one of my tenants might have used it. Some. I don't know. But anyway, that was leftover paint. That's why that got that, that color. So anyway, I am now inside. I'm like reading up on how to build out a food truck. <laughs> reading the, because uh, food trucks were new to Chicago then. We were like only... As far as the kind of uh, stuff we were doing, it was like a handful, if that, of food trucks had had gone through that process. I want to say it was no more than even three to five. So they were still trying to figure out the ordinances around it. Some stuff just wasn't hashed out completely. But one thing that the city was saying, city of Chicago was saying was you had to have your food truck attached to a commercial, a physical commercial space uh kitchen so you couldn't just say i'm gonna run this food truck and i'm gonna cook at home in my kitchen no it had to be a commercial kitchen that was also licensed by the city of chicago and the, the, the department of health so that meant we needed to use the cupcake gallery for that well i finally get i get the truck built out like and when i say built i wish i had pictures of that i have now put working sinks in there counters uh refrigerators all kinds of, making it all work making sure stuff don't be sliding around all kind of stuff so now that's in there and it's time to get it approved for the health department so they come to his all they got to do is come to his bakery which was open and just approve it well wouldn't you know it you've heard how many times that Darius Crooks establishments his restaurants have failed health health inspections. So do you want to guess what happened when it was time for his kitchen to be or his place to be inspected just so that we can get a license for the food truck? He's used to failing and he started failing way back then is what I'm saying from health department. So now Darius Crooks, now he, he already had a license for his cupcake gallery. So even though we failed the inspection due to the conditions of his space, in order to get a license for this, they still were letting him operate because it wasn't the same license. It's very technical. It was a separate license than the cupcake gallery. So he's like, well, I, I'm like, okay, well, they have, here, here it is. He's so busy. This is, there's Crook's tricks. So, trust me, I know what the Three Kings went through because I've been through it. He gets so busy. Now, this is his whole brainchild that he brought to us, well, brought to me for sure. Now, all of a sudden, he's too busy for all the processes and steps. So now it's time for it to get approved by the um, uh, for the inspectors to come out. He's talking about he don't have he don't have it on his schedule. He busy. He got to do this. He got to do that. So now all of a sudden I'm taking time away from my business because I have flexibility. And he took advantage of that, too. He knew that. Now I'm coming up there to wait on the health inspectors to inspect his restaurant. Right. Uh, Chocolate said he was busy doing what? I can't even remember what the lie was back then. Honestly, I just can't even remember. So they it fell, it failed the first inspection. I give him the information, tell him what failed, what needs to be corrected. Guess what then? Now he need help getting, uh, well, for one, he wasn't, <laughs> he ain't clean. He don't know how to do all that stuff. So he wasn't doing what it take to get it approved. So the next thing you know, I'm there because now I'm I'm locked in. I'm a worker and I'm an entrepreneur and I'm also a person that when I have a goal, I'm going to get it. So my goal in my mind, after I've now gotten gone from an angel investor to now I got to get this thing on the road was I'm going to get this thing on the road. Like I lost focus. My focus became get it on the road. But he know that about me. Y'all. Well, those of y'all who really know me, y'all know that. Like I'm focused when I'm focused. So. Now my goal is. It, we got to just get this thing licensed so it can get on the roll and then I can <laughs> recoup my money and be done with this. So I'm now coming to the restaurant at night after business hours, cleaning the grates over the, the stove because they were fill, full of grease, nasty, cracking, uh, caulking cracks that they were saying insects could come through, putting weather stripping on doors, whatever else. It was a whole little list of stuff that I had to do 
I didn't have to, but I, that I was doing because I felt I had to, to get this truck on the road so I can get my money back. <laughs> so finally, get the truck approved. Oh, we was happy. So, so, so happy. Now, G was the one going downtown, taking care of the, the paperwork. G is the one who, look how thick this is. Let me take this down for a minute. G, because I don't try, try to have y'all see everything. <laughs> G was the one who went and got, I think I can show y'all this though, from this far. The business license. This is the business license application. G went downtown and was taking care of that. The Articles of Incorporation with the state uh, of Illinois, Darius Crooks did this because you can do this online. He didn't have to get his fat ass up and do nothing. So I'm doing the physical getting the truck on the road, G doing the runaround to get the city, you know, the, the, the license and stuff. And finally, it is approved. And this is where it gets real. This is where this is where her um, scam Yance, she get to work. This is where we started to see the, 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 the devil in her. I hadn't seen it to this point, y'all. I hadn't. So. Now the truck is approved. I'm good. I'm now going back to concentrating on my own businesses. And I'm like, have at it. Do what y'all do. Next thing you know, I'm getting a call from G. I want to say about a, going into week two that we ain't heard nothing. Ain't nothing happening. G calls me and he's like, hey, he's kind of like, hey, what's going on with the truck? Like he ain't saying nothing. He ain't doing nothing. We got it approved. Blah, blah, blah. He was talking about I was going to go on, a, you know, go on the road. Da, 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 this and that. And I'm like, yeah, I was like, honestly, I've been so busy trying to like I lost so much time trying to take care of that, that I was just like, I'm glad I'm done. I'm focusing, getting refocused on my own ish. He's like, well, this need to get on road now. G at the time. That money, he that was money he needed <laughs> like that was his that wasn't like extra money for him. So he's like, I need my money like I'm not here just to, I can't just be throwing away thousands of dollars like that. Me, I'm like, it would be a lesson learned. Not that I'm trying to do that, but I didn't need it. So um, he then calls Darius Crooks and he's like, hey, what's going on with the truck? Darius Crooks. Now, pay attention, y'all, as we continue, because, you know, I'm going to keep covering everything else about him. He's always like when somebody needs something for him, when it's time for him to be accountable for something that he probably pulls somebody in. I'm so busy. So he's telling G that he's too busy. Um, he got, I got so much on my plate. I don't know. You know, it's just so much. Um, y'all don't understand what it takes to do all this stuff, blah, 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 this and that. And he's like, yeah, but you, this was your idea. You the one that pulled us into this. So G being the compassionate person he is, but also like, Hey, let's get this thing on the road. So we can get this, get this money back. G tells him crooks. Well, of course, he said Darius. <laughs> He's like, Crooks, what can we do to help you? What do you need? He's like, I need a lot. I mean, I, I ain't even got time to go grocery shopping. So this is going to blow y'all fucking mad. So G says, well, what if we do the grocery shopping for you? Would that help you get it on the road? Like, would that help you? And he was like, yeah, if you can, you know, that, that'll help. So G says to Crooks, Scamyance, he says, "Will give us the grocery list of what you need, and then we'll go." Crook says, "Okay." At some point later, I don't know. I don't, again, it was years ago, so it wasn't a matter of even more than a day or so, or you know, the same day or the next day or whatever. Darius Crooks provides G with a written grocery list of everything he needs for the food truck. This is where you start to see how satanic this psychopath is. We end up going because I had a um, I had an account at the Restaurant Depot because I had a business uh, that used the Restaurant Depot. So I use my account. We go to the Restaurant Depot and G and I literally go around there with carts, these big ass industrial carts. And we are picking up all the stuff that is on Darius Crook's grocery list. We get to the register. Now, the goal was that we were going to split the 
grocery bill costs. And then, you know, we would be paid back through the business. We, this is why I'm so, so I'm so untrusting now. It's crazy. <laughs> Cause this, this stuff changed my DNA just to have somebody you knew so well to be so dirty. We get to the register. Everything gets rang up. And I had never in my life seen a grocery bill that expensive. The lady tells us, I want to say for sure it's about $1,700. It's between $1,500 to $1,700 worth of groceries. $1,500 to $1,700 worth of groceries. Because I just remember when it was the split, it was, it was definitely over, it, I feel like it was like $700 each or something. Because I was like, what? Here I am thinking it's going to be like maybe two, $300 a piece. <laughs> so we like, okay, fine. We're trying to get this thing on the road. Okay, that's a lot. <laughs> I was not expecting this. Then we, now we've driven the, the food truck to, to the grocery store. So we've loaded it up with all the groceries. And when I tell you groceries, it's everything from perishables. He's got us be, buying uh, pre-made soups. Um, we're buying um, roast, um, lunch meat. We're buying um, salad mix. But I'm telling y'all, we're at Restaurant Depot. So it's for stores and restaurants. So everything we're buying is bulk. So when I say a bag of lettuce, the bag of lettuce is that big, <laughs> you know, and that thick, like that kind of stuff. So. Um, we then load it up and then we head to the, um, cupcake gallery. Cause that is the licensed kitchen for the food truck. And that's where everything is supposed to be prepared legally. We get there with all the stuff that Darius Crooks told us he needed from his list, not our list, not a guesstimation, not us trying to take over what he told us he needs. We get there and this motherfucker says, Why, where y'all going with all this stuff? I ain't got no room in these refrigerators for this stuff. Uh, I ain't got no space. How y'all, where, how is y'all going to put this in here? That's got to go somewhere else. I, I got my cupcakes right there. That's that's the fridge I need for my so-and-sos. What? First of all, this is the place that's licensed for the food truck. This is where everything's supposed to be prepped. Second of all, you had us go get the groceries knowing that we were bringing them here because you said you were going to prepare the food and have the truck ready to go out. I think the next day, it will obviously it's supposed to go like out like the next day or something because we're buying per perishable foods. He told us the food could not go there. Right. Uh, Chocolate said, what? See, I would have been cursing him out. See, we were different, though. The veil B that I was back then is the veil B he want me to be today. And I ain't that. I ain't the one who just sit back and like, oh, God, I let God handle my problems. And I do. But God has given me tools <laughs> to handle myself, too, and defend myself. And that's what I'm doing. Um, Southern Bell says, does he have a borderline or polar bipolar disorder? He's a sociopath. Quit giving him the nice stuff. He's a sociopath. Darius Crooks is a undiagnosed. Well, I don't know. His therapist might say, oh, no, I diagnosed him already. As far as I know, he's an undiagnosed sociopath. And I say that because of what I know. Because of what I know, not what I think, not what y'all tell me online, not what I guesstimate, not because I'm trying to be theatrical or dramatical or, or get clicks and views. No, the motherfucker is a sociopath. So. Now we have all this food and we are just outdone again. His best friend since high school and his, as he said, my ex-boyfriend <laughs> and his ex-boyfriend of two years who became a, a really good friend, like a, 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 a brother for almost a decade. The two of them sitting there like, what the hell just, what is happening? A lot like Corey and Jeremy, except for again. He learned with that to divide and conquer because y'all saw how he was pitting Jeremy against Corey or Corey against Jeremy. He's pitting them against each other so that they would never align because he learned 
from the situation with me and G that when you treat people horribly like that, they trauma bond. <laughs> and to this day, me and G are friends. G invited me to his house last night for a food tasting. I'm like, dude, no, it was it last night? Night before. I was like, dude, it's my night off. They didn't give me enough likes. I need the rest. <laughs> We're that close. Got trips planned. We're going to see Usher and everything else later this year. Tons of trips planned. G and I are very good friends. He didn't want that to happen with Jeremy and Corey, so he's pitting them against each other. They ain't know. I saw what he was doing. I said, oh, he learned. He learned. So now we're stuck with all this food. I'm like, I lived at that point an hour away from where his cupcake gallery was. And G lived eh, 30 something, 40 minutes away, depending on traffic. So G is like, well, I can take some of it. Oh, 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 oh. I had to mess up my screen, hitting the button, hitting the um. Hold on, y'all. Good lord. What just happened? Here we go. Okay. Okay. All my screens wiped clear. <laughs> Uh, Darius Crooks is uh, over there with his voodoo doll with me, a voodoo doll of me <laughs> and my computers, swiping them, <laughs> knocking them over. <laughs> so G is like, well, I could take some of this. And then I'm like, well, for one, I live too far, but I had at that point, like the side by side refrigerator, you know, those things don't have no space in them. But I was like, my fridges are full. So I then had the idea, okay, I got a rental property. And at that point, one of my rental properties was vacant and had full appliances. So I said, well, I do have my other house. We could put the stuff in there. So we brought it over to the house. We slammed, and that wasn't the biggest refrigerator. We packed it to the brim where you had to like push the door and try to make it stick. Um, and it was so much that I still had stuff to take to my house and G had stuff to take to his house. I told you how much in groceries it was. Now, in our mind at this point, I don't when you get when you're dealing with a traumatic situation and you're getting kind of like sp spun, you don't necessarily think clearly because in our mind, what Darius Crooks for one hadn't completely quit. It was just like he was acting, acting like that. So it's kind of like. He wasn't saying, oh, I don't want this no more. And I just set y'all up. And this this me writing out this list was me writing this out like, as a big ass long, um, long itemized F you with each piece of uh, bread or lettuce or a uh, case of potatoes, whatever I had was right in there. Uh, paper goods, cups, containers. He had it all on straws. <laughs> he had it all on there. And every line item was a fuck you to us is what I later learned. What we should have did was took all that ish back <laughs> the next day. That's what we should have did. But we're thinking like we're giving again. We hadn't been through that before with him or at all. But with him, like we still were trusting that he wasn't. We didn't know yet that he was the spawn of Satan and a sociopath. And a miserable bitch. I didn't know that yet. I learned that over time. I didn't understand how all her unhealed trauma from her daddy never spending no time with her. She only seen him four or five times in her life. And her mama ain't love her the way she wanted to be loved. Let her tell it. The mama always picked me in over her. I did not know that it ran that deep. I did not know. So, um, long story short, the, now the stuff is sitting because we're waiting on crooks to say when he's going to supposedly be cooking this stuff. But at this point, we're waking up to what's really happening. So we decide at that point to try to recoup at least the money that we spent on the groceries. Now, this is where he flips the narrative to try to act like we tried to take over the business. No, he left us hanging with seventeen dollars or $1,500 worth of groceries that we now are like, at that point, we were like, we can't, you can't return wilted lettuce, <laughs> you know? So we now trying to recoup. So we decide, the truck is running. The truck is legal, blah, 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 this and that. Now, we are illegally because my kitchen, again, the place where we took the food it was a vacant house with a full kitchen. So it's like, OK, but we can we can make the stuff here and then try to get it sold and recoup our money from the groceries, at least. So that was the idea. Then. So we tried to do that. It did not work. For one. G had a full time job as a supervisor for a major uh transportation company 
I was still running two separate businesses other than that. So the long story short, we weren't that clued in. We were trying to make our money real quick, but then it just required more than that. And so we both was like, we stepped away at a point. So fast forward, Darius Crooks reaches out a week or two or three after, and then he offers to purchase the truck. I'm trying to think how to do this. Cause I actually have the timeline here in emails. Um, but I'm just giving it this way. Then we're going to watch the, we're going to do the reaction. Then I'll break it down with the, the, the timeline, uh, with the, all this, I'll do that on the back end. So he then offers to, uh, purchase the truck because the truck is now in my, um, in the yard of, of my rental property. He offers to purchase the truck. Um, and then it was mainly G. I'll say mainly G was like, now you didn't put us through all of that, what I just told y'all. And you think you just finna like buy the truck back and then all is well. He's like, no, we put all this time in. We put more money than just the truck into it. He wanted to be made whole and then some pain and suffering. So I'm like, you know, you're right, actually. You are right. Although my main thing is like, let me just be done and be done with her. I was like, but you're right. So Darius Crooks agrees. We then, we had the original contract. Unlike uh, Jeremy and Corey, I, I, don't, I don't roll with people, even friends with no contract. <laughs> what I didn't know back then is that Darius Crooks don't abide by contracts no way. This is not our first contract, but this is our second contract. Uh, the first contract, I don't know what the hell that's at. Second contract is the one that matters because this is the one he, he skipped out on. So, Sign the second contract, some negotiating. We'll go through those emails. He decides um, what we, we agree. The new deal is he's 50%. We're 25, 25. We are now, si both of us are silent investors. Darius Crooks runs the daily operations, all this other stuff. And then, but we are um, all owners and no financial decisions can be made without the others, you know, all that sort of stuff. All laid out here. We'll we'll read some of those pieces. It's an eight page contract. Now, he'll claim that we had all kind of loopholes in the contract. And um, one of his one of his go to's is that we're stupid because we um, put in the contract that we wanted shares of the profit and not the revenue. Again, he's the devil. He's the spawn of Satan. So even after all he put us through, it's not that we didn't know about that. We chose not to go that route because we still were not trying to get him as he thinks. So we decided, let's just be fair and say out of the profits, after all the expenses, the legitimate expenses, not astronomical bullshit he just adds on there, we'll split that. He took that grace that we gave as a way to take advantage of the situation. And what he did was gave himself a, a huge $75,000 salary and then uh, inflated all the expenses. Now, again, we didn't know him like that yet. We, we learned about our first time learning that he was a scammer, a liar, a sociopath and all of that pathological liar was when he scammed us. And he only did it once because that's all he got was one chance. Before that, we neither one of us had had that experience with him. So he got us. Now he'll say we were slow and this and da-da-da. No, we were giving people, still are, giving people, graceful people, people who treat people we love with dignity and respect. He is none of that. He is none of that. And he took advantage of that from his best friend from high school and a person who he dated and became like a brother with. He knew that he had great those deep relationships or that we had those deep relationships. He's not fully formed emotionally. So what we didn't know at the time was that he don't have that same level of connection in the same way. He can act like he does, like he does all day on the Internet. But when it all boils down, he doesn't. That's how Crystal got dismissed so easily. And Q and Ramon and um, Marcel and Madeline and. Uh, uh, stovetop kishes, uh, Danny Rose. I mean, the list goes on and on. All these people who were close to him in his life at points just got dismissed because he doesn't really know 
how to really have human emotions. He can act like he does, but he doesn't. That's why none of his relationships ever work. The relationship he had with me when he was 19 years, years old was his longest relationship. What does that say? And then I'm the one obsessed. I ain't gonna tell my business, but I've been in strong relationships. So anyway, um, what part was I at? So we, we make the agreement. At that point, we released the truck to him. Immediately, pretty much, yeah, immediately upon re releasing the truck to him, within a week or so, he's quiet. Things are seeming strange. Like, what the hell is going on? This Negro then rebranded the truck. Also written in the contract that he can't do that. He rebranded the truck to be the Sugar Whip and Uptown Pies, which was his cupcake gallery and his pie company. Has now nothing to do with the lunch machine. And he's out there. I think how we found out was he was on Twitter uh, talking about Sugar Whip on his way to so-and-so location. And we like, he don't have no two trucks. How's, what's the Sugar Whip? So Calvin, oh, so the um, G had a friend go to one of the locations to spot out, to figure out what's happening. Like, what's this truck? Is that Sugar Whip? The same as the, is it our truck? I don't have a picture handy, but it was, in fact, the lunch machine truck. Instead of it being green and white, it was now pink and white. I don't even think, he hadn't even wrapped it. He didn't wrap it. He didn't have no logo or nothing on it. He just painted everything that I had pink. He painted uh, everything I had green, he painted pink. And so he does that and then... He's now, now at this point, the, the, the gig is up and we realize what's happening. We then start sending emails like, hey, you're doing this, you're doing that. Because now phone calls ain't being answered. You know how all that go. So he's now responding via emails. He's talking about your, your contract got loopholes in it and it lets me do this and let me do that and blah, blah, blah. So next thing you know, and I do have that here. Next thing you know, we take it to the next level. I was like, you know what, F it. Time for the attorney. <laughs> We're calling the, the attorney. Uh, for one, he's claiming that is now for one, he'll also claim that we were slow and we created that contract, the original contract ourselves. We did not. We did not. We had an attorney look at the original contract. Again, the reason that we did the shares based on the profit and not the revenue was because we were not trying to be unfair. She don't know about that. So um, the letter that my attorney wrote to him now, what, what originally happened was I sent my attorney <laughs> all of this. <laughs> and then um, I gave like a cover letter and I explained, hold on y'all. I call myself trying to organize this. So blow it up. Is this it? Here we go. Cause this was based on one of Darius Crook's uh, emails and I'm like, I know we had an attorney involved in the beginning, but, you know, she's claiming, you know, this and that and da-da-da. So let me double check. So uh, I emailed, um, no, I, this was back in the day. So we were faxing back then. So I faxed over 33 pages to my um, to my attorney. And I said, hi, and gave her her name. I said, I have attached the documents regarding the partnership agreement that I have uh, the current dispute with the partner, Darius T. Williams that G and I have. Um, our question is, are there quote unquote loopholes in our agreement as Darius claims that allow him to pay himself a salary of his choosing, which was $75,000, in addition to his shares, his partnership shares? Um, and can he change the company's legal docs and bank accounts to only include his name and accounts therefore uh, not giving G and myself access. I said, I also, uh, also, I'd like to know if we have a case for receiving damages or return of our investment of money and time since the business that is currently operating uh, will soon be operating at a profit. I think at that point, I still thought he was, <laughs> I thought, I think I thought he was out there driving with the lunch machine, but he had 
rebranded everything and we called it on Twitter. That's how we figured it out because he put his whole life on, you know, the Internet. So anyway, the attorney then responds. And, uh, no, the attorney tells me, no, he on some BS. Uh, you, you, y'all contract is fine. He's definitely overstepping his bounds, et cetera, et cetera. She was like, um, I can send him a letter and we can see, you know, what happens. She sends the letter. Darius Travoy Williams, his legal name. Please be advised that blank has contacted this office regarding the uh, certain terms of the partnership agreement that you are breaching. Um, basically, it's me. Mr. Vail B uh, tells us that you unilaterally decided to be paid a salary. According to the agreement, paragraphs eight, there are certain thresholds for profit and savings that must be met prior to decision regarding salary. In addition, the decision for salary must be paid unan uh, by unanimous agreement. None of the thresholds or unanimous agreement pr provisions have been met. This is from my attorney. Not me, not my dream, not my thought from the attorney. Actually, the second attorney, because this attorney ain't the attorney who helped us um, with the first, uh, with the contract. This ain't even the same attorney. Says, according to the time commitment provision of the agreement, you are responsible for daily operations. Your authority does not extend to unilateral financial decision. Therefore, should you pursue a salary without express unanimous decision of all involved, you will be breaching the agreement. That was in a letter. That was a letter from my attorney to Darius Crooks. What did she do? She ignored it. So then we really realized how bad it was. At this point, everything is like, we just see it's an issue. show. We, are, we just, we're baffled that it, it got to that point. Um, and then I will read the email. We'll, we'll do that late. Cause I want to get into the video um, part of it. So y'all can really see her with her theatrics. Um, so, the attorney um, sends him that. He ignores it. Talk to my attorney again. She's like, you're going to have to sue him if you want to pursue this. And I said, okay, I'm ready to pursue it. Because at that point now, I'm mad because I'm like, why put us through this? I was your friend who was really trying to help your dream. I got my own ish going on over here. You distracted me and pulled me out of my stuff to pull me in your BS only to become a predator why we were fine the way we were i didn't want to ever be a part of his stuff so i decide yes we're gonna sue my attorney then says well i don't do litigation so <laughs> you gotta find you another attorney for that <laughs> it's like God, don't it. <laughs> so um well she wasn't well versed in that and in, in, in litigating on the level that we needed i'll just put it that way so anyway we then get another referral we have a meeting with uh, an attorney and we um, we had a lunch meeting with an attorney uh, through a recommendation of a friend. And this was a white guy. And we sat down with him and told him, explained to him the situation. At that time, we had these folders and more. Now, at that time, we're also, by now, we have learned that we weren't the only ones being scammed by crooks. Before that, we, we were in the dark. We did not know that other people were having these sort of issues of Darius Crooks stealing money, scamming, et cetera. At this point, the Cupcake Gallery investors, which is about 60 or so of them, they're now coming out the woodworks like he stole our money. He was supposed to be paying us. We're six, eight months in and we haven't gotten any of our money or not all of it. He's skipping payments. Some people ain't getting nothing. Now he's ignoring phone calls. He had a group, um, a Facebook group. Now he done blocked everybody. Yeah, he started blocking people way back in 2010. <laughs> Probably before that, but that, that I know of, 2010. Blocking people and everything. So now, because they knew we were friends with him, you know, social media and everything, we got photos together and stuff. So they hunting, trying to find this scammer. And now he's missing. Like, everybody knew he had the Cupcake Gallery bakery, but now all of a sudden he ain't there. What we didn't know at the time, I think we found out in that time frame, he had just left. He disappeared. Crooks was renting an apartment in G's building. He was G was his landlord. He was renting an apartment there and he had a roommate. The room G and all the other people in the building 
they go about their date like they all go to work, including Crooks uh, roommate. They all come home in the evening. Crooks is gone. Crooks has sent a message to the other landlord because of the dual um, like landlords uh, partnership. Telling the other landlord, I left. I'm gone. I left my my portion of the rent because he had a roommate. So he's like, I left my half of the rent in the bedroom, wherever. Do y'all think the landlord ever found <laughs> ever got that money? <laughs> Do you think the money was where the landlord uh, where Crooks told the landlord it was? So anyway, Darius Crooks then takes all of his stuff that he could fit in his car and packed it in his car and drove off, never to be seen or heard from for a few months. He left his bed, TVs, CDs, DVDs. He only packed what he felt he needed. Now, I'm pulling this ish up. I'm pulling this up. I told y'all there's going to be a... It's going to be a trilogy. Hold on. Let me see if I can pull this up. Um, again, everything Crooks does. Oh, if I can think of the name. Uh, give me a second, y'all. Here we go. This might be it. Lord, let this be it. That's why I like to pull stuff ahead of time. Okay, let me see. Here it is. God, you so good. Okay, so let me finish telling this part of the story. So we, at that point, now we realize that it was bigger than us. It wasn't just the friendship thing. It was... Oh, my God, who was he? Who was our friend of all these years? He not only turned on us who loved him dearly back then. Now he's the spawn of Satan. I can give a fuck about him. But back then, he was like a brother to me. He really was. I really cared about him. Obviously, I gave a nigga $4,000 for his dream. <laughs> Y'all know black people don't give each other money like that. Y'all know that. So. We find out he owed his investor, the Cupcake Gallery investors. Um, then we find out that he had started, and we didn't know, but he had started the grocery delivery company that he told me about, I guess, a year before that or whatever. It was the pipe dream. I find out at this point that he actually had started it, and it was like an online base. If you didn't know better, it would seem like a peapod kind of thing. You order your groceries online, and then they deliver them to you. Well, the problem was it was just a website and he would drop off groceries here or there. It was a Ponzi scheme. Just like his cookware, just like the Dining with Darius events. Some people get it. Some people don't. <laughs> it's a Ponzi scheme. So he did that with the fresh to go. And then all of a sudden we're uh, um, it was a group of friends. Somebody sent it. They was like, oh, my God, look at this stunt queen been up to. And they send me the link to the website. Where it's like a, a a list of reviews of people um, saying that Fresh Go is a scam. Darius Crooks is a scammer. They um, ordered groceries and never got delivered. Their credit cards got charged multiple times. I think I did a video on it. I think I did. Like uh, well over a year or two ago. All that kind of stuff. And my mind is just blown. I'm like, because it's like a rediscovery of who who is that person. So. When all the ish hit the fan, all of a sudden, no one can find Darius Crooks. Now, mind you, let him tell his story as he tells it today. He was so successful. He had a and he when he tells the Cupcake Gallery story now, he makes it seem like some grand um, shop that he had that was so he, huge in Chicago and so successful. Meanwhile, when he left and closed his doors, it was only a few neighbors in the neighborhood like, what happened to I wanted a cupcake today? It wasn't no pandemonium in Chicago like, oh, where that cupcake shop go? No, he wasn't getting enough business, which is why he scammed all these other. He had all these other grifts going on. So he, he made a mad dash, grifted everybody he could, sold the truck that we had. The one that, you know, we illegally he sold it. 
Here's the Craigslist ad. Now, the funny part about this Craigslist ad, I knew nothing about this at the time. Nothing. I just found out that this even, I never knew really what happened to the truck. I found out about what happened to the truck about a year ago. Somebody sent this to me. And uh, this is, it says, popular Chicago food truck is fully licensed, thanks to Vail B, <laughs> and continues to go out daily, is for sale. It's a 1997 GMC step van, um, previously used for local deliveries. That's when he was, so this, he telling on himself, I didn't even, I ain't read this in so long. I ain't read this in, since I got it. Previously used for local deliveries. So he was also using this for the fresh go. Probably is why he didn't put, now that makes sense of why he wouldn't put the um, the Sugar Whip logo on the, the bread truck. He was using it for multiple businesses. And he wasn't selling the Sugar Whip, the cupcakes like he claimed. He had the Uptown Pies, Cupcake Gallery, Local Holla, Fresh to Go. Who I'm forgetting? It's another business I'm forgetting. But all these businesses going at the same time, one person with no staff. I mean, he would hire somebody here or there for the cupcake gallery, but he couldn't hold staff. He wasn't paying them right. He was treating them horribly. People was quitting left. Right. Uh, Renee S says the solo cups. Right. <laughs> uh, it says none. None remembers his cupcake. Right. Um, but yeah, him saying it was for local deliveries, all that. Interesting. Interesting. So, um, yeah, and he has it as the pie machine. Yeah, he says, again, uh, we use this truck daily and around the loop. See our Twitter feed at the pie machine. But it was also at the sh uh, Sugar Whip. <laughs> <sighs> Craziness, y'all. It's exhausting. This is why I was like, for one, it's hard to tell this story because it's so convoluted. And that's why I wanted to do documentary style. But it is what it is. Are y'all enjoying this? Let me let me do a poll. Are you enjoying this? Should I continue? Should I continue? Y'all want to y'all want to call it a quick call it a night? And while y'all answer that, give me a second. Get off camera for a second. Right. Uh, who is that? Uh, case man uh, management, um, cast management. Yes. Surviving Darius Crooks. Surviving Crooks, which is why I named the first series. <laughs> and that's why I got so many series. It's so crazy. Um, <laughs> Gilly is saying it's still sh uh, a shocking story. Imagine living it, Gilly. Imagine living it and then having the sassy bitch lie on you constantly. <laughs> like I just made all this up. Gilly's a person who knows me personally. So he knows that this is BS. He knew this sassy bitch too. <laughs> Actually, he's the person I'm, um, I met through Darius Crooks. I met a few people through, through Darius Crooks. Um, oh wow, okay, 95% of y'all are enjoying this so far, so let's keep it going. So, okay, what did I leave off? So, we we finding out all this stuff, all the, the house of cards are falling. Now you go to the cupcake gallery, and it's like <clears throat> I drove past there because I was still in shock, y'all. Y'all just gotta imagine your friend of almost a decade, and 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 Gilly knows how close we were. Again, I met gilly at darius crook's house at like a small little gathering a dinner gathering it was actually we were taping an episode of everyday cooking i ain't even mentioned that part but again it's so many pieces i used to help darius crooks with when he first started his youtube channel you know whose video work you're watching what was that video that was in what maybe i don't know y'all y'all could look at his first video whenever it was 2008, nine, something like that. That video work you're watching, it's amateurish. Though. <laughs> mine, mine. The first few videos on his channel, probably the first 10 or 15 or whatever it was, 
me. The houses you saw, deck the kitchens that he was in, how they were decorated. The first two kitchens. Me. Because remember, he gets kicked out of apartments, so he got kicked out the other one, and that's how we end up with the second kitchen I had to decorate. So I've been around. And he likes to dismiss me like I am some crazy stalker, miserable person when I've only been the kind of friend that just um, held my people down. I don't do it as much now. I've become a little, I don't even think I'm selfish. I'm just very protective of my space now. Very protective. Um, so he disappears. I end up driving up north at a certain point because I'm just baffled and I'm like, is he still in Chicago? Because now he didn't left his apartment. He left his, he didn't even tell his roommate he was leaving. He only told the one landlord via a text message that he was leaving and that the money was in the room that never got found. <laughs> left beds, clothes, like I said, TVs, DVDs, CDs. I mean, B was just kind of like, okay, well, she left it. We'll go through it. <laughs> Uh, Bree yourself is saying, Vail B, you should do a video comparing his businesses to Kitchen Comeback and both he claimed the staff let him down and did him wrong, but provided no training. Yes. Uh, thank you for the suggestion. This is already heavy, a heavy haul of enough. And trust me, I got a bunch of other series coming <laughs> that you'll be like, oh, we can hold back on that. <laughs> we can hold back on that. But uh, yes, thank you. So I go up north to look at the cupcake guy because I'm like, I'm trying to figure out what's happening at this point. This is this is some 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 Netflix. Netflix wasn't even around back then. I don't think uh, I think that was you, you had to go go to the um, the little vending machines. I think that's how you did Netflix back then. <laughs> wasn't no online. So. Um, I go up there up north. And. I see. Oh, shoot. I wish I had a thought to pull it in here. I go up there. Let me see. Let me see. Some of y'all don't know this stuff. Remember, Darius Crooks is to tell all this stuff off the top of his head. He don't, he don't have no, uh, no, no evidence, no receipts, no proof. Come on, computer. Let's see if I can pull this up real quick for y'all. Some of y'all know what the cupcake gallery looked like, but some of y'all might not. Let me see. Let me see if it's still here, because if not, it's in my larger digital file archive. It's a shame, y'all. It's so much of this ish. Dog, I don't think it's here. Uh, I know where it's at. Hold on. No rush. Oh, here's right here. Uh, close that. Go back to that. Here it is right here. Uh, let me see. Should I give you that picture or this picture? This picture better. Give me a second. Downloading it now. Come over here to downloads. Hopefully it comes right away. Downloads. Oh, no, I got to do it this way. So I'm going to show you what I saw. Because again, Darius Crook, it wasn't no going out of business sale. It wasn't no, no announcement. You know, he had grand opening announcements. It wasn't no grand closing announcement. Wasn't no sign on the door. It was just like, it was like he, he got taken. <laughs> it was like he had a Carly Russell situation. All of a sudden, he was just gone. Ah, oh, this thing taking forever to download now. I don't know why it's been doing that lately. Okay, here's, here's another way for me to share it. Just looks funny. Okay, I'm gonna share a screen. We work it out. Share a window. Oops, I gotta separate it though. Hold on. Now we do it that way. Well, it's a little though. Try to make it bigger. There we go. Now that'll work. Here we go. Again, I get a receipts. So this is the cupcake gallery. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> some of y'all gonna be like, no, nah, this ain't uptown pass. You lying. See, he a liar. Uh, flying monkey. He a liar. Look at him. He that ain't no cupcake gallery. If you look in the corner <laughs> of the picture, it says cupcake gallery 
And then the, the bigger sign you see right in front of you is Uptown Pies. So what Darius Crooks did was, again, he had Cupcake Gallery investors, about the, you know 50 to 60 people who invested uh, money for seed money for him to open up the shop. When he opened it up, that, if you pay attention, you start to see a pattern here. When he opened up the Cupcake Gallery, what he did was within a couple months, he opened up Uptown Pies. Then commingled the funds, told his original Cupcake Gallery investors who were expecting monthly payouts. He told them that the Cupcake Gallery was operating at a loss and that any money he was making was only from his Uptown Pies company. He told them that the Cupcake Gallery that they invested in that bought this storefront, now it has a com another company in it, within it, sharing the same POS. Y'all know he, he all for a POS system, a, a cash register system, point of, uh, point of uh, service. He was doing it way back then. It just looked different. He created a whole other business within the same storefront. That's not two different storefronts, y'all. That's the same storefront, and you can walk from one side to the other, from the inside. Also, when I went up there, this is what I saw, and this is why I was lost, because I'm like, they say he gone, and the Cupcake Gallery is closed. Like, again, we had to figure out, because people were like, every time I go, it's closed. That's how they figured out that he had left. He abandoned his business to the point that the curtains were still up. The, the pictures were still on the wall. Supplies were still there. He just took what he wanted. It looked just like that when I went up. I was like, this looked like it'll be open later today. He took nothing out of it. Then. Hold on. Yeah, take that out. Then he. So he disappears. Time frame, I don't know. But like I said, it was some weeks to a couple months, Disappear, disappears, and then, I can't even remember, I can't remember how the order, but he eventually ends up putting a post on Facebook saying uh, about his mental health. Do I have that here? I don't think I pulled that in. And if not, I'll do that another time, the one from back then, because I think there's Maybe I don't. I don't know if I have that one back then from back then, because Darius Crooks has a habit of. OK, but he wrote it from 20. He wrote it from. Um, I got it right here. Oh, 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 oh. Make it a little smaller so y'all can see what I'm reading from. Again, I got the receipts. So he's now speaking about the past. This is in 2015, but all the stuff I just described went down in, based on the receipts here, uh, the end of 2011. So he says here in this Facebook post, wait, should I do this? Yeah, I'll do this. It was just under four years ago, February 2012, to be exact. I had reached my limit with now, mind you, I'm sorry because some people don't be catching on. So I want to stop, hit the pause, hit the brakes. I want to move too fast for some of y'all. This is Darius Crooks now explaining in his words what happened back at the time period I'm explaining. But this is years later, him reflecting on that time period where he just disappeared from Chicago and pops up in New York and is claiming that um, he had to get away from it all. He was uh, every, the weight of every, the world was on him, mental health crises. He was thinking about taking his life. Now I remember when he posted that. And at this point I knew he was on some bullshit. And I, I, everything was coming down. I'm hearing this stuff. I'm, I'm finding out stuff I never knew. And I said, she's a scammer. And then she comes out with this mental health breakdown. But she's explaining it on her social media as if she was legitimately running real businesses and it all just became too much to handle. 
Mind y'all, this 2012. I'm not talking about 2021 when the, uh, I'm sorry, 2019 when the uh, Atlanta restaurant, the Soul Crab Atlanta and Greens and Gravy and Soul Crab Chicago got shut down and she claimed her mental health issues. I ain't talking about that time. Nor am I talking about the time where she was scheduling. She had the uh, earlier days of dining with Darius Crooks events. And in 2016, 2017, all of a sudden she canceled a mass amount of events. I think a whole season talking about her mental health. Did those people get the refunds? The people who were paid for those events in advance? Hell no. I ain't talking about them times. Or when she had the DHAV cruise. They used to have a cruise. Well, they only had it one year. The second year they had the cruise. Um, Darius Crooks, right? Darius Legion. Thank you, uh, N Neil Twelve. Darius Legion. Second year he tried to do the the D Hive cruise on his own because, as usual, when he sees someone with talent, he tries to rob them of that talent and then thinks he can do a better job. And then it's a shit show, just like it was with Madeline and the food photography. What well, years earlier? It was a travel agent for the DHAV cruise. People didn't get their money with that. The second cruise did not happen. So anyway, back to this. October 26th of 2015, Darius Crooks is reflecting on four years ago. He's saying it was just under four years ago, February 2012, to be exact. I had reached my limit with how my life had gone in Chicago. I had reached my limit of how many people I could scam without them chasing me down with pitchforks in Chicago. I'm sorry, I'm narrating. <laughs> I had set out for a bit of a vacation, not knowing my entire world would be turned upside down. Your vacation was walking away from your, your business, your brick and mortar business without saying anything, no signs, no, no word, leaving your roommate, not saying anything, Taking all of your possessions that you could fit in your car that you wanted to take, but leaving everything else behind, never to return to get it. Is that a vacation? That sounds more like an escape. <laughs> he says, I had gotten in a bad business deal with some business partners. Y'all want to know who that's supposed to be? That's supposed to be me. <laughs> that's supposed to be me. Me, me and, and G. You see, she the victim now. Now, y'all know the, what I told y'all. I ain't even got to the receipt yet. We ain't gonna get to these tonight, I can tell. We, we gonna do them tomorrow, though, because I know the flying monkey's gonna be like, he just got a bunch of papers. He ain't show nothing on the papers. He the lying. He he spent these 10 years creating fake documents. Yeah. Get y'all crazy ass out of here. Because y'all, no matter what I say, y'all going to say it's wrong or I done made up something or blah, blah, blah. Who gives a fuck? Get the, get the fuck out of here. I don't care. Just for the people who got good sense. You've been drinking too much Kool-Aid. You need rehab. Anyway. He says, I had got in a bad business deal with some business partners. I had folks who I thought were friends turn around on me. Sound like you're telling my story right now. <laughs> Sound like my story. I think I remember a Facebook status reading this bitch. You're such a drama queen. <laughs> I think um, I think I remember reading a Facebook status, a Facebook status reading. He should kill himself and ask for a new life because he's fucked this one completely up. Guess who said that? Guess who said that? <laughs> Put it in the chat. Guess who said it? <laughs> now, what I'll say about this is this again is her false recreating the narrative, becoming the victim. Yeah, girl, I know you're watching. I said it. I said it in a private group with friends because we were talking about this fake ish. This wasn't the original post. There's, there's a different one when it was all going down. And I found out your ass was a sociopathic pathological lying ass scammer and you get on uh social media begging for likes and views and pity with your lies talking about some all this shit you done did to everybody harming hundreds of people in chicago is because your mental health and you was running these successful businesses and i said you know what if she's talking about taking her life 
let the bitch take her life because she done fucked this one up and she needs to start all over again. And I will repeat that shit 10 fucking years later. Start over again because you done fucked it up still. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> anyway. And on top of that, again, she's gaslighting because I did not say that in a Facebook post in public because I got an image to uphold. <laughs> I got an image to uphold. I said it in our private friend group. Here's the thing I learned years later. I learned that we had a mole in the group. Y'all know when you got a group of friends, there's always this messy bitch. It was this messy bitch in our group. She gone now. She disappeared too. She ran off somewhere. She's probably a scammer too. Her name was Terrence. She was taking bones back and forth. I never trusted the bitch. She was that kind of, when I say she, it's a he. But she was like, she was questioning her stuff too. So I don't know what she, I, I we speculated her ass might have went somewhere and became, you know, the other, went on the other side, so to speak. So y'all know y'all get that messy person in the group who try to be everybody's counselor. And you're like, bitch, I don't trust you. I was just in the conversation with so-and-so and so-and-so and you telling that private conversation you had with so-and-so who trusted you. You think I'm crazy? So I made her think I was comfortable with her, but I was never that comfortable with her. She never learned nothing about me, ever. Come to find, now I still, although I didn't trust her, although I saw the messiness and I knew she act like she cared and was acting like she was a counselor, but she was a, she was a messy bitch. Although I knew that, um, I did not know that she was taking bones in that way. So I commented that in our group friend group chat as everyone was saying shit. I just got a slick ass tongue. <laughs> when you piss me off, the, the ram comes out of me. The Aries comes out of me. And the Aries came out in that comment with a group of friends where it should have been a safe space. She then takes a screenshot of whatever she did and sends it to this old messy uh, sociopathic bitch because she was playing both sides. That's how he found out about it. But now she wants to change the, she as in Scamionce, Darius Crooks, Legion, uh, Darius Legion. He tells the story now as I posted that on Facebook on my public status. You lying, bitch. I don't even, I never even really emoted like that on Facebook. Bring the goddamn receipts. I got the receipts. Bring your receipts where I posted that on a public page. He's trying to make it sound worse. Did I say it? Hell yeah. What I said today? Hell fucking yeah. But did I post it on Facebook on a public post? No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Anyway. Um. So, yeah, the person... <laughs> said uh she should you know go ahead if she want to do it let her y'all don't try to stop her because she done f this up let her start over maybe she'll get a good parents <laughs> no let me, let me stop i'm going too deep going too deep let me stop but that's a real problem that is a real problem her childhood is a real problem and maybe if she started all over again she would get born to people who actually took care of her i don't know and i ain't even saying that because i think she'd be lying on her mama we might get that exclusive interview. We got some stuff in the work. Don't worry about it. So he goes on to say, um, creatively, I was spent. It had gotten to the point where I no longer had a desire to even cook anything. The moment I Googled information on attempting suicide, I knew I had literally hit rock bottom. Girl, you ain't got to Google that. When you're Googling it, it's for the theatrics. And you, I guarantee you, you still didn't Google it. I guarantee you. Show me your, your search history from 20, uh, 2012. Show me your search history where you Googled it. Lying ass. And people fall for that. I know people are going to be like, oh, Val, you too harsh. You too insensitive. She lying. She is lying. That's why I'm like, okay, girl, if you're going to take your, take it. Prove it, because she ain't. <laughs> she's too narcissistic. She's a sociopath. She's too stuck on herself. She'd be too afraid to leave her money behind. She ain't going to do it. Y'all quit falling for this bullshit. Whatever, and she ain't the only sociopath out here on the internet. Y'all be falling for anything. she be pissing me off. Anyway, I Googled information on S attempt. I knew I had literally hit rock bottom. 
sitting in a hotel room at, on Matt Carter Highway in New York, New Jersey. She's writing a fucking uh, story here. This is a masterpiece here. Sitting in the hotel room on Matt Carter Highway in New York, New Jersey. I had nothing left. I had a... I had always had answers. I had always had a plan to scam people. And then I got caught up in Chicago and had to run away. <laughs> it came down quicker on me than I thought. Thank you so much, uh, Shanice. Uh, air it out, Mel B. The expose of Darius Crooks, Cooks, <laughs> the crook, right. I had always had a plan. I was never roaming aimlessly. At this point, Everything, everything was empty. I had nothing left. I don't quite remember when or where things started to turn themselves around, but they did. I found work. And believe it or not, the normalcy of every day of an everyday routine actually gave me a bit of energy I needed to start the repair work on myself. I started making friends and eventually worked through the pain of scamming people who loved me deeply. Cause then I realized they would never be around again and they would possibly air me out later down the line. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. Oh, we need, we need it. Vel Nito tonight. I know he, he's trying to get through me and I'm like, hold on Vel Nito. I ain't got the fake beard on. You guys, you can't, can't come out today. I started making friends and eventually worked through the pain. That was important. I'm a firm believer that it's totally okay to get injured. But rehabilitation happens best when one works through the pain to reach their healing. It was time to give my beliefs a soul and watch them grow and thrive in every area of my life. I was gonna read this loud because it's capital letters. Oh, I didn't know I wasn't sharing about. I was gonna read this loud because it's capital letters, but uh, this is not Corey. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michelle uh, Philly. Let it out, Bill. we here for it. Thank y'all, I appreciate y'all. Again, it's taken me three years to even, of him, of me knowing he was lying about it because before then, I didn't even know. Three years of my silence. I'm letting it all hang out. He says, she says, <laughs> Scamyante says, Darius Legion says, as usual, he fakes. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Somebody put this as a caption. They said, as usual, he fakes a mental health crisis in 2012 when the scams all came crashing down. That's not even my quote. <laughs> That's not my caption. Somebody else wrote that. So that was Darius Legion, a.k.a. Scamyante. Her dramatic reenactment, or I'm sorry, dramatic recreating of the narrative, all victim. She ain't talked about scamming her friends. She ain't talked about the businesses she ran away from. She ain't talked about her roommate who she left hanging. She ain't talking about all the hundreds of people with the cupcake, well, between the two, the cupcake gallery scam investors hunting after her, the fresh gold, fresh to go, well, fresh gold customers who she was scamming their credit cards, charging them twice, the 90 some dollars, 80 some dollars. They all on this um, thread. I've done a video on it because it's going to be people. He's saying all this stuff, but he ain't proven it. I got fucking videos on it. Look at the archives. I broke it down. We read the reviews and everything, the comments from the people. Can't do that in every goddamn video. You, you ain't going to want to believe no way, so it don't matter. Might be time for you to go listen to your master anyway. He's about to go live in a minute to distract y'all from the truth. Um, oh, so we we read that now, right? I told y'all what happened out of my mouth from my remembrance. Now I've also read Dar in Darius Crook's own dr dramatic words, what he recalled happened. Well, <laughs> his twisted narrative of what occurred. Now, let's hear it from the sassy trick herself, Skayonce. Skamyonce. <laughs> Darius Crooks. So what I'm about to share with you is Darius Crooks, when was this? Five years ago, had an interview um, 
for the Chicago Humanities Festival, and he went to a local restaurant called Peaches, which I absolutely love. Now, I almost went there this weekend for breakfast, and now I want it, so I'll probably go this coming weekend to Peaches, see if my friends want to go. If not, hell, I'll go by myself. Um, well, I can get somebody to go, don't trust me. I can get somebody to go. Anyway, um, oh, what am I sharing? Hold on. I want to share the screen, not video. Screen, screen, screen. Here we go. Go there. Here we go. Good people. There we go. All right. So this is Darius Crooks sitting across from the owner's owner, rather, of Peaches. He owns a couple other places over there in Bronzeville, too. And here, um, I'm gonna try to find this plot because this was a this was a 55 minute. Uh, interview. We can do a watch party on this later or something on Patreon or something, but not tonight. We ain't doing that. Right now we're trying to get, we 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 here working on laying out the timeline of her scammers. So I'm going to try to find, I don't know exactly where I'm looking, but I'm looking for her retelling the piece of the story we just watched and see how she talks about it. I'm going to break down this too. Let me know if y'all have any issues with the sound. And that's how we, that's hey guys, how we what did he say? I would have never what? thought about that. There you go. You know how you do it? You go, I would not. Who would have ever thought? This was pre um, her mommy makeover. I don't know if she had had the first gastric or not yet. This is about how she looked when I last had saw her suffer. She had head, hair, rather. She didn't have all that glossiness on top of her head. So she started looking like a grandpa. To take red velvet and turn it into a twinkie. Fried a whole. Uh, but no, so I had a conversation with myself and I said, uh, what was important was I need to figure out how to reach people. Is it the way that you use it? One person say something to two people, mm -hmm. one oh, hold on. the paper sack with the flour in is the hot sauce. Okay. The best chefs in the world. That I, I give it. She got the gift of gab though, but that, you know, all scammers need that. All scammers. Got from that. Madrid last week. This and cult leaders, cult leaders. Sangria is amazing, right? You drank I, a lot of it. I drank a lot of sangria. Yes, Nicole. He's had two of them, the gastrics, yes. And he's had different types of mommy makeovers. He's had the tummy tucks and ain't no telling what else. She's probably going to get a BBL next. Y'all know she got them fake chiclet um, toilet teeth. Sangria. <laughs> I had to, it was recent. Successful with revenue um, and have one of the, uh, but not. Nah, so we, I wanted to just like create um, recipes and ideas, yeah. anything other space and i couldn't understand why we ran out of space so much squirrels she talked about me i said oh, damn, mom in keto it. but people don't want to be vegan for we first day and first out Let so maybe i should I I that's good Get up. although you're on the ever because what we wanted to do is enter the house no Friday. <laughs> so so i'm gonna start off with just some some uh basic questions uh we already talked about cheese steaks okay oh here it is here oh, it was at the beginning sorry so this is Scamion say Darius. I'm sorry, Darius Legion. I think I'm just starting to call her Darius Legion. I was here in Chicago. This is her telling her uh, story of how she left Chicago um, and why I think she uh, vaguely. Follow me, know that I say it as much as I possibly can. I even wear T-shirts in my videos that say four wings fried hard with salt, pepper, and mild <laughs> sauce. Okay, so I rep Chicago hard. Um, I was here in Chicago 29 years. Um, and then I was actually going to, so I've gone through a rough patch in life and, you know, people who go through rough patches. So she describes everything I just told y'all about what was happening in Chicago. Literally all that timeline I've been laying out for two hours. She, she describes it in this interview as a rough patch in life. Is this just a rough patch in life? What I described, I'm about to do a poll as I, as y'all listen to her, uh, is what I described just a little rough, rough patch in life. <laughs> can go to, I don't know, I don't know, Israel or something or go to Africa and find themselves. I was broke, so I couldn't really go find myself. <laughs> couldn't go that far, okay? So what I did was um, I got on the road to go to Philadelphia to get cheesesteaks, okay? Always been fat. So I said, I'm going to go... <laughs> And I, um, we didn't have Google Maps back then. It was like MapQuest or something, right? So I missed the exit to go to uh, Philly, and I ended up on the Turnpike in New Jersey. I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'll go to New York. Why not? So I'm in New York for a while. Uh, it felt like home at the moment, so I ended up staying in New York. I don't advise anyone ever do this. 
But I stayed in New York. Um, I found a job in like four days. It's that West Side mentality. <laughs> hustler. You got to hustle. So uh, you got to hustle. He's a hustler for real. Uh, Vil uh, is the truth. Darius and the D-Hivers are liars. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mimi. I appreciate your uh, super sticker. Uh, super chat, rather. Um, so he, Darius Crooks describes this whole venture. Like, pay attention to what he said. And I'm going to rewind it. He says that he left Chicago. It was a rough patch. He he needed to step away for a little while. So he decided to go drive from Chicago to Philadelphia. Why is that West Side? Okay. He decided to drive from Chicago to Philadelphia to get Chief Steaks. I can almost buy that because she she's that much of a foodie. I can buy that. However, why was you why did you pack all your stuff? Why did you leave and not tell your roommate where you was going or that you weren't coming back? He then says on his way to Philly for Philly cheesesteaks from Chicago, he then makes a wrong uh, turn on the turnpike and ends up going towards New York and stayed for years. Did not return back to Chicago for years. I think he was gone from Chicago for a year or two or something like that because I remember when he did sneak into Chicago, it word got around and it got back to me that, oh, Darius then came back to Chicago. And I thought they were saying he had moved back or something, but he had been gone a long time, like at least a year, at least a year. Okay, so let's listen to this foolishness again. Who the hell packs up all their stuff to go get a sandwich in a different state? Well, that far, because just in case you didn't know, Philadelphia is not uh, right next to Illinois. <laughs> it's not. At the moment, so I ended up staying in New York. I don't advise anyone. Hold on, go a little further to this. Go to like, I don't know, I don't know. Israel, born and raised. Um, I love Chicago. Um, people who follow me know that. I say it as much as I possibly can. I even wear T-shirts in my videos that say four wings fried hard with salt, pepper, and mild <laughs> sauce. Okay, so I rep Chicago hard. Um, I was here in Chicago 29 years, um, and then. I was actually going to, so I've gone through a rough patch in life and, you know, people who go through rough patches can go to, I don't know, I don't know, Israel or something or go to Africa and find themselves. I was broke, so I couldn't really go find myself. <laughs> couldn't go that far, okay? So what I did was um, I got on the road to go to Philadelphia to get cheesesteaks, okay? Always been fat. So I said, I'm going to go... <laughs> And I, um, we didn't have Google Maps back then. It was like MapQuest or something, right? So I missed the exit to go to uh, Philly, and I ended up on the turnpike in New Jersey. I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'll go to New York. Why not? So I'm in New York for a while. Uh, it felt like home at the moment, so I ended up staying in New York. I don't advise anyone ever do this, but I stayed in New York. Um, I found a job in like four days. It's that West Side mentality. <laughs> hustle. You got to hustle. So uh, I, was in, I was in New York, uh, still working on food stuff, and I'm sure we'll get to it in some of the questions. And then what happened was um, I was able to quit my full-time job that I had to pursue my passion because uh, it just had got to a really good space financially. And I was like, I, it was the Nor'easters were coming. So again, her story, her version of the story. I see how shit. Will it let me keep it up? Oh, no, I took it down. Her version of the story, Scam Yonsei, is that again, everything was fine in Chicago. She was just, she it was just a little rough patch. Forget everything I said, it was just a little rough patch. And she needed a little break and she got hungry. She got hungry, so she decided to drive to Philly because she had a taste for some Philly cheese steaks. Now, we all, uh, uh, she is not the only person who has gotten a craving for some food and you decide to go for a little ride for it. I have personally never taken a, a 10 hour drive for something I had a taste for <laughs> much less than decide to stay and, and move there for years <laughs> and never return home. That ain't happened to me. I don't know. Maybe some of y'all got that same, a similar story, but Darius Crooks claimed that on his way to get his cheesesteaks from Chicago to Philly, 
made a wrong turn, ended up in Jersey, decided, hey, I might as well go to New York, then decided, hey, I might as well look for a job while I'm here. I'm going to get a sandwich, but then I'm going to look, look for jobs too. What? <laughs> right. Uh, Sugar Spice says, not a 10 or 12 hour drive, right, for a sandwich. And then you happen to have all your stuff. Again, remember, y'all, all his stuff. That's the part he's leaving out of this story. Again, I tell y'all time and time again, he tells a bit of the truth. All this is like he did drive to from Chicago to New York. He ended up in New York. All the rest of this, well, and then he's minimizing all the drama he caused and chaos in Chicago to just a, a little uh, a, a little hiccup, a little rough patch in life. <laughs> But again, a little bit of the truth wrapped up in a big old lie. So now y'all get the breakdown and y'all hear, not only did she write her dramatic version that we just read, and there are other versions out there, but then she tells it this way, and it's, again, miracle. She got a job in four days. And the job she claims that she got in four days was, uh, um, what do they call it? Oh, uh, HR director corner office working for crush and wakefield in new york city in four days she got hired the d hags they don't use they bring for nothing i swear they don't i would listen to that story and be like what kind of director job you got that they hired you in four days a job like that you got multiple interviews and if they that desperate to hire you at such a high level in four days that make me think the, the biz this multi-billion dollar company is going out of business. <laughs> so, something ain't right. I've never had a management or executive level job that hired me. You're lucky if you get in in a month. <laughs> it's been my experience. I just automatically would just start counting the clock a month out. <laughs> like, okay, they telling me it's looking good and I got to do all this stuff. About a month from now, I'll be starting. <laughs> three weeks, maybe three weeks. But four days? Right, Claudia. Thank you, Claudia. Uh, Claudia said, ain't nobody that desperate in New York City to be hiring that child. Right. Uh, Nurse Lady Vlog says, I'm from New, uh, New York. He's lying. They, why y'all simply know this and the D-hags by this hook, line, and sinker is be beyond me. New York City, he walked in there in four days and got him a, 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 a executive level position at a huge, uh, I think it's a global real estate firm or something. What that says, him crossing state lines for food is the only thing he says that I can believe, even though he's lying. Right, 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 right. Um, so speaking of the metal, I, I forgot this part. This is when I learned early. Oh, let me close out this poll. Was Crooks uh, Chicago scamming drama just a rough patch? 5% of y'all said yes. <laughs> hey, hacks. Hey, D hacks. And those of you who fingers have slipped. 95% of y'all was like, uh, of course, she's gaslighting as usual. So this was my first knowledge hearing of Crooks having depression, mental health issues. What I started to see, well, I didn't. Now, fast forward. Now, Crooks, as far as when he left Chicago, Crooks wasn't on my radar. He was gone, gone with the wind. When we talked, oh, I didn't, I didn't say we when when the other business partner G and I sat down with the attorney, the other attorney who was like giving us, um, uh, giving us counsel on the on the case. He said that you guys have a case. He's clearly violated the contract, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this is the third attorney who has looked at said contract, third attorney, saying, y'all got a case. Y'all good. He's lying. He's gaslighting. He said, however, based on what you told me, he didn't. He got people after him. He broke. He driving a $1,500 car all the way to New York. Now, we didn't know at the time. We didn't know where he went. We just knew he was missing. But he drove that fifteen hundred dollar car all the way to New York. <laughs> so those are the things we knew about him. And at that point, I think he had filed his at least his first first bankruptcy. Yes, he filed that when I knew him. I do remember that. So he was like, "Y'all could pursue this, and I will represent you." 
and y'all will win. He said, the only thing is, based on what you're telling me, you will likely not get your money because he's running. You're trying to find him as it is. You're chasing him down and he's broke. He's like, if he had money, I would suggest that y'all, you know, take your chances. He said, but he's broke and he's already running. He said, and it would cost us $3,000 just to retain him, not counting whatever would come down the line. And he was like, my suggestion, depending on if y'all just want to do it for principle, would be if you don't, you know, that you're kind of putting more bad, good money after bad. So that was why, again, people act like you should have sued him. You think all this shit wasn't working towards suing somebody? The only reason we decided not to was because we were already thousands of dollars in. At that point, I couldn't even tell you now. I think I was 10, 15, something thousand dollars in with just all the various expenses. Again, I'm helping to build out the truck. I'm, I'm buying paint. I'm time and labor, like all really all said and done about 20, 20 grand. If you're counting time, time, labor, and actual uh, investment money capital out of my pocket, about 20, 20K. Why would I then want to add <laughs> another 3,000 that I would probably never see? Right. Uh, case manager says suing broke people is pointless. We knew that we were informed of that and then it made sense. And so we decided to let it be. We knew that eventually it was going to catch up to him. Did I know I was going to do look like this? No, he was not. Um, uh, his name wasn't Darius Cro Cooks. There was no such thing as a Darius Cooks. He hadn't even come up with that name yet. He only had his uh, YouTube everyday cooking everyday cooking he had a youtube channel and he had his facebook page and a twitter and the twitter barely had any followers that's all he had so this whole lie bs that he does about oh i was envious and i saw his star rising and all this girl you was a scammer and everything you had done at that point had failed miserably so much and you were lying about the successes that you that we thought you did have nor were we hating on when we thought you were successful because we were all successful and are in our own right. We not that kind of people. That's why all the people you're not friends with no more are still friends and thriving. What? The math ain't mathing. But the flying monkeys just go with his narrative. I don't know why. <laughs> this is just the most ironic thing to me that they will say, Darius say you lying. He said, what scamming cult leader, leader crook is going to tell you? Well, no, nah, actually, everything he's saying is true. <laughs> yeah, I did scam them. Uh, now, legitimately, I broke the contract and ignored everything that was there. And, oh, yeah, I did run an illegal fresh-to-go business, uh, the one that I told Black Enterprise that I did not um, know anything about and didn't run. And then they put in their Black Enterprise article. Well, we got time. We got time. I know it's a little off topic a little bit, but I just want to show you how much of a fucking liar she is because she gets away with this and then tries to put it on other people like, you know, Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy ain't got nothing to do with this. <laughs> but no, just, you know, she's just she's a liar. And then when she gets caught in her lie, she acts like she doesn't know that they exist. When people were asking her if she read this Black Enterprise letter, I mean, um, Black Enterprise article. I'm going to say Darius Crooks. Oh, look. I'm forgetting how to spell her name. When people asked her if she had read this letter, when they was, uh, this article, when they were supposed to be retracting it per her, per her words. Oh, wow. This is a whole new article. I ain't seen this one. Darius Crooks William. Oh, let me put it up. Then we're gonna get back to the Let's see. I told y'all this is gonna be a long one. <laughs> and then we're coming back tomorrow because I ain't even really gotten to the nitty-gritty. I had to give y'all today was overview. Cause I I need as I'm breaking down the finer points, I need y'all to have points of reference because it's a lot of piece of moving parts. And if you don't understand the big picture, you get lost in the little minutia of it. So now y'all are understanding the big picture. So as we get into the minutia, you know what ties to what and who G was and who the extra partner was and why Darius Crooks refers to me as an ex versus the business partner or ex friend he scammed. I'm the ex boyfriend just so he can try to minimize um, 
having people think I'm just uh, some crazy stalker, jealous person or something crazy. But this article, I, I'm not going to read it now, but it says Darius Cooks Williams bashes black owned restaurants in Indianapolis. These are the kind of headlines she has. But yet we're supposed to be jealous of her. Time's up controversy. Darius Wilson. I think this was the first article. Pretty sure that was the first one. I, I didn't know it was the first one. First article. Uh, she has three articles on her in Black Enterprise, all of them negative. And somebody's supposed to be jealous of that? You Google her name, and it's after you see her paid ads and how she pushed herself up on the on the algorithm for Google, all the rest of them is about her being a fucking scammer. Who would be jealous of that? Your legacy is shit. Why would I ever be jealous of that? Okay, so this was uh, the article from Kia Morgan Smith at uh, Black Enterprise. Uh, it says, exclusive from receipts to recipe. I'm sorry, from recipes to receipts. Darius Cooks Williams denies claims that he is a crook. This ain't from Vail B. I didn't write this. But I'm supposed to be, the, I guess, the only person outing him and some hater. This is based on, and again, there's receipts. We're, we, we're, um, I'm going to go through this uh, article again. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun to go through. Let me see. I just want to get to the main part about her, as in Darius Crooks, denying any association to the Fresh Go business that we know for a fact. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Sonny Anderson and Williams Fresh Go controversy. Sonny Anderson is the uh, Food Network uh, chef, a host. Uh, some of y'all are familiar with her. She's the one that put Darius Crooks on. She put him on the Food Network when he was just a blogger and had just started his YouTube channel. Without her, he would not have gained the level of popularity that he has gained. She put him, she basically put a flame to the rocket. So it says Anderson and Williams had a fresh go business. No, a Anderson claims that Williams had a fresh go business where it promised to deliver fresh vegetables on the doorsteps of customers, but people bombarded her with angry messages. I ain't even talking about this part. I was just talking about the stuff I saw online. I forgot this part. Claiming they were ripped off and overcharged on their credit cards. Yes, people were saying, even college students and stuff, he was robbing everybody, but he was doing it in other neighborhoods. So it wasn't the hood, it was the other neighborhoods. And those people were, it was college students saying, I ordered groceries. I didn't get them. He charged my card $96.18 two and three times. And they had to fight it with their banks and everything. So they said, um, and so he had this part of this diversity was because he had appeared on the Sonny Anderson show on the Food Network. So he took that uh, as an opportunity to scam those people. So uh, it goes on to say they hit up Anderson because she had him on her show years ago. So they like, help us find this scammer. You introduced us to him. We wouldn't have knew about him other than that. This also explains why his demographic is not, um, is not varied. All he has is black church, uh, church going uh, women and wide backs. Anderson said she gave Williams the uh, benefit of doubt but says he refused to answer her inquiry inquiries. Um, Sonny is quoted as saying, the bottom line is before me, no one on TV knew of him and he didn't have the platform to build what he built. Just imagine if you could do it the right way with the talent and ability to galvanize people. Instead, he chose to become an internet cult leader. They said, she said, why wouldn't you want to do it the right way? She asked. I say, because he is the spawn of Satan. Anderson says she took part in a Zoom meeting organized by the Kitchenista with other black women chefs and was floored by what she heard. She was quoted as saying a lot of black women are eager to get their careers started by and are being taken advantage of. One person on the call had direct dealings with crooks. And they were all just crying, she shared. I always wonder, was that uh, Danny Rose? Y'all know he did her hella wrong. Um, I'm trying not to read this whole, but okay, I got to keep reading it. Says, last year, Anderson said when she posted that people should be aware of dealing with Williams because of his scams, she said he and his attorney sent a cease and desist letter 
that she countered with a letter from her attorney stating that since attorney general found that he was engaged in an illegal credit repair activities, Anderson had the right to call him a scammer on her platforms to describe him. So her attorney responded saying, hey, uh, she can call him a scammer because the state of Georgia called him a scammer in that complaint where he had to pay $145,000 in restitution in a payment plan. Although he claimed he just wrote a check. He had a payment plan. I got those legal documents too. Says in retaliation, Williams sold his cookbook with the discount code Sunny and Bad Wig. So remember, he does these discount codes. Oh, I'm like, what's the sound? Hold on, y'all. It's like a commercial plan. What's this plan? Oh, let me mute it this way. How do you just got sounds playing on the ads? I mean, yeah, on a um article. So anyway, he does these discount codes like this. Um, we've seen it time and time again. There's, it was newer back then. Now, you know, it's rinse and repeat with it. And then D hags, they, they eat it up. Oh, I can't wait for the next discount code, Massa. So they said, even though Anderson said people approached her about his Fresh Go business, Williams proclaimed that he has no ties to Fresh Go, doesn't know what it is, and never had any affiliation with it. So Darius Crooks told... Black Enterprise Magazine um, writer and uh, director, um, digital director, uh, editor rather at large, told her that he don't even know what the hell a Fresh Go is. I know he know what Fresh Go is. Sonny Anderson know he know what Fresh Go is. We seen him be involved in it. And he told Black Enterprise, because it's so provable that it was such a scam, he claims pleads ignorance and says he don't know nothing about it. The article then quotes Darius Crooks himself as saying, I have no idea what she's talking about, Williams said about Fresh Go, which is referred to as Fresh To Go and Fresh Go Now. Those were some iteration of the websites that he had for it. But the name of the business was Fresh Go. Crooks goes on to say, I had a, cup co a, a cupcake shop and I had a pie shop, he said. William said, I believe, uh, William said he believes Anderson is jealous of him. Just like me. I'm jealous and bitter and something else. <laughs> oh, and yeah, uh, love sick or something. Everybody got, it's their problem. He's always the victim. We all got unresolved emotional issues. That's the only reason we air out the truths about his scams. It's because we're broken people. Okay. All right. Uh, says of him, he he claims producers wanted him to do more shows. So it ain't got nothing to do with these people calling her like, girl, how you got a scam on your show and he didn't rob me? You need to get my money back. It ain't got nothing to do with that. It's because he had it's because she asked him to be on her show so that she could help him grow. And the producers actually liked him. She got jealous. What? She wanted you to be liked. She wanted you to be on the show. She asked you on the show. The producers didn't. Now she's jealous because what she wanted to happen actually happened? What? Goes on to say that Anderson denies that she... Uh, Anderson denies that and says she is the one who put him on and only wanted to see him succeed but had to cut ties when people associated her with his fraudulent companies. Remember, now you see, she said companies. And then you got the, the cupcake gallery investors all of a sudden like, where he at? Anderson said, nobody got food with the Fresh Go, with Fresh Go, and instead people complained of small incremental unauthorized charges. Again, no small charge. I don't know how small y'all consider somebody charging your card 80 to $90 or just under $100 multiple times i don't know if i can say that small per se but that's what he was doing to people's credit cards again he needed money for when he escaped to new york that's why i told y'all he did like a huge grift where he sweeped everything um that he could get he robbed he robbed us his friends he sold the truck he got whatever money he can get from the cupcake gallery and left his landlord hanging, didn't even say he was leaving. So of course he didn't pay that rent, you know, that month or two or whatever it was. Y'all know, we don't even know how many months behind he was in that rent. 
Then you got the Fresh Go scam where he started charging hundreds of people's credit cards with that and multiple times. He then used all of that money and that was his seed money to start his life all over again. He didn't understand my instructions. He thought I meant start all over again on this earth. I meant go back to the beginning with, <laughs> with Satan and hopefully uh, God would rescue you this time around. But yeah, he's trying to start his life all over again in New York. And then we he grew into what we uh, unfortunately see today. So um, the the addendum to this is uh, Black Enterprise followed up and asked Williams directly, meaning Darius Crooks, Scamisha, do you know anything about this fresh go being associated with you? So keep in mind, the reporter originally talked to all these people. She talked to Sonny Anderson. Sonny Anderson tells her this because uh, I think she had already talked to Will. She did. She had already talked to Darius Crooks. He gave his false narrative that Sonny Anderson is just jealous. Da, 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 da. She goes to Sonny Anderson. She said, this is what he's saying. And what I know from experience, because I also was a part of this uh, interview, was that she recorded our interviews. So what Darius Crooks said about me and G with the food truck business, I got to hear it from his own words. And I had never heard before until that moment in 2021 that he thought we were out to get him and he decided to get us before we got him is how he worded it. And I'm like, she's crazy. Like, get her, get her. I just wanted to get my money back. <laughs> get her. What? We didn't even have that kind of relationship, but she's that kind of person. So, but it was funny how she, and that's where you see her mental illness. Cause you're like, wow, she flipped that narrative in her head for her to become a victim and then anything concerning money, she's just very greedy like that. So when that was just never my intention, that was never our intention to get her, get her girl. What? <laughs> Ain't no gladiator fight, girl. <laughs> um, so Black Enterprise then followed up with Darius Crooks and asked him, do you know anything about this fresh go being associated with you? William said, Darius Crooks, nothing. <laughs> he continued. Really, that's what I'm saying. That's why I would love to know from Sonny what I ever did to her. This is her gaslighting. Uh, the question was, do you know about this business that you registered with the state of Illinois? You got all kind of social media posts about. Do you know anything about that? That was the question. I'm just noticing that the images aren't here anymore. Let me see. Will it come? Anyway, they say after further in investigation, the kitchen needs to provide it a 2012 screenshot of Darius Williams promoting Fresh Go and saying it's a great day to shop hashtag Fresh Go back in 2012. You know what? I think the I ain't gonna worry about it because I still got this stuff anyway. Yeah, the images aren't here in the article anymore. I guess they, they might do this to save space on their servers or something. But anyway, that was that. I just wanted to show y'all how she gaslights, recreates narratives. They asking her about a business that is provable that she owned, fresh go, that she scammed people with, documented. He knows that it's easy to prove that it was a, a whole scam. So he wants to remove himself from it. I don't know what that is. See, that's what I'm saying. They just jealous of me. What? <laughs> you, it's a business you own. You, you, you have articles of incorporation with the state of Illinois. You got tweets out there. You have uh, marketing materials. You got people in the comments complaining about getting robbed of their money, stating your name in the comment. <laughs> what? They like, Darius Williams is a crook. He took my money. He charged my card multiple times and won't answer my call. And he like, see, that's what I understand. Why she hates me. What? <laughs> oh, he's such a gaslighter. Thank you Mo, so much, uh, Sock Snob Films. Says, first time watching you live. This man is a mess. Sorry you went through this. I appreciate that, friend. I really greatly appreciate that. And thank you for uh, for uh, watching and supporting uh, the content. Appreciate it. Um, okay, so I think that's, again, I feel like, whoo, I got, I got, we got the overview out. This ain't it. This ain't it. <laughs> Trust. Don't feel like, well, Vel, I ain't going to come back tomorrow. I'm a little busy or, you know, uh, I got so-and-so to watch tomorrow because 
we got to get into this part. So what I'm going to do for the next 30 minutes, because I'm going to end this at three hours. For the next 30 minutes, we're going to now watch Darius Crooks recreating narratives, leading into his various versions of the um, Lunch Machine story. And then tomorrow we'll do more of a deeper dive. But today it was more overview, more me, you know, torching this shit. <laughs> like, fuck it. Just torch it. <laughs> now the flames are just going behind us. <laughs> now we're just going to move into the rest of it. Oh, no, this ain't the one I want to play. Come on, videos. Let me see. Okay. And the so what I did, I spent a lot of time editing today, y'all. I am exhausted. <laughs> Truth be told, I'm exhausted. I spent hours editing this. So what I did was um, mash together, I think it's three different occasions of him talking, three or four occasions of him talking about the food truck, um, his version of the story, and how he recreates the narrative. Um, but I chopped it up a little bit, and sometimes I mashed up him telling a part of the story in in different at different times. So you'll see. But what I started this with the beginning, I started with the false narrative of me being only like the ex stalker ex boyfriend and how he tries to lean into that. I wish I had it from the very beginning, and I do. I just gotta find that stuff where he really was only calling me the ex boyfriend so that people would dismiss me as some crazy stalker. And he was leaving out the part that we were business partners and friends for, you know, however long in between. But what I have here is showing you that what I told you our relationship was, our friendship was, is how he felt about it, too. But it doesn't work with the narrative to make me the crazy stalker uh, ex that would work well with the flying monkeys who be like, I got a crazy ex, too. Or, or I was a crazy ex, too, and I know... Every boyfriend I had had put restraining orders and girlfriends had put restraining orders out on me. So I, I know I'm crazy like Bill B was about you. <laughs> he wants them to buy into that because he feels like people can relate. We've all had situate, most of us, the, I would say probably the majority of us have had some situation with some crazy person who liked us <laughs> a little too much. So that's relatable. And then you disregard that person real easily and anything associated to them he wants them to do that to me southern bells is saying uh what veil what did you see in him ew um darius cruz was 19 he was not 42 looking like he was 72 like he does today so that's part of it he was younger also i've told this story on patreon and i also show my ex prior to Darius Crooks. The ex I had prior to Darius Crooks. I'll go ahead and take the camera off of this. The ex I had, and I might, I might show the picture, well, show the picture without showing their face. The ex I had before Darius Crooks had took me through it, y'all. We was together about two years, two and a half years, something like that. Fine. Fine. That I was asking them what he looked like because they I showed them the picture of him on Patreon. What did y'all say on Patreon? Uh, Shanice, you was there. Who else was there? Look, Shanice saying, uh, put it on the screen. Uh, I forgot who doing the screens and who doing the... the. Oh, I forgot I got star comments too. I've been <laughs> totally ignoring the star comments. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, we're going to watch a little bit of this and then we're going to move to the star comment. Um, what was I saying? Oh, oh, tell tell them who, who he looked like. Okay, there you go. Shanice is saying... He looked like LL Cool J. I don't, they said that. I felt like more, I'll be sure. At least that was kind of how I felt. But they saying LL Cool J, I'll be sure. He was foreign. And he put me through it. So then, when I break up, and now I left him. Because I was like, okay, I can't. I can't y'all have been with these people that y'all like. Okay, we ain't really, <laughs> we just kind of stagnant. And so I finally let him go. And then a few weeks later, I meet Crooks. Put those comments up about, about the ex so they know I'm not exaggerating. I'm not lying. They see now people are commenting about the ex, have seen the ex. They from Patreon, our executive people. And you can join as well. It's um, patreon.com backslash IMVLB. So 
Y'all won't see a picture of him because I ain't putting that up no more. <laughs> but um, so anyway, I then meet Darius Crooks, you know, through the little dating line thing. He shows up. Now, this was like a blind meeting, like it was a telephone date line thing. He shows up and he was the uh, intelligent, seemed to be mature for his age, um, fluffy, um, funny looking fat guy. And you, you know what I said to myself? I said, self, you've done the Adonis. You've done the man who is fine, who every time you open your eyes, you're like, God damn, how you get so beautiful. Sw swag. Y'all wouldn't know that he was gay. Not that that's a, a pro, but for me it is. <laughs> but not that that means anything major. But I love him. Love him so much. Like, end up going back with him 10 years later and repeating the cycle. <laughs> 10 years later, I did what I did in my early 20s. I'm like, how I get back here? <laughs> It was fun while it lasted, though. But anyway, so I had to find Adonis, who just was really everything I wanted. But, it, you know, some of these people, they got issues. And he had issues. So I was like, let me give the fat, funny guy who was a little mature for his age. Again, he was 19. He looked a little similar to that. He had funny looking uh, uh, TikTok teeth. teeth TikTok teeth back then. Before he got the chiclet uh, toilet teeth. I'm like, get a fat boy a chance. Fat boy might, you know, ugly fat boy might treat you better. He might, you know, he little more probably, oh, he younger, so he ain't got all that luggage, the baggage from the old relationship. You know, I had all kinds of stuff. We can go down that. On Patreon, we talk more about all the relationship issues. So that's how I got in this. I said, let me get a fat, ugly, but smart boy a chance. And he might be better. And it was just the dry as uh, the Sahara Desert dating with him. And he was a lazy lay. So, and then come to find out he's a sociopath. But I didn't know that at the time. And then he was he was a narcissist. I got, I got to see that over time. I thought he was just selfish, though. It took me a while to see the narc that it was narcissism. I thought it was, he was selfish. But that's how I got into it, to answer your question. Okay. Oh, this is the one we want to play. So this in the beginning is uh, Darius Crooks um, talking about our friendship, et cetera, et cetera, and, and, uh, and him uh, gaslighting about supposedly I was just some crazy jealous ex. They talk, I love you. The more they talk, oh, please, I'm made for this. Uh, sorry, I started this with an intro from last night. This was him on his IG lies last night gaslighting he's saying that uh for one he was telling you know his false narrative about the lunch machine story but he was also saying that he uh loves the fact that i am uh doing this series of him and that he's built for this and i'm like cool because i wasn't planning on stopping no time soon so good I'm glad we're on the same page with this my name is not jeremy i am made for this you understand me you see that read for jeremy gotta throw jeremy under the bus Oh, please keep talking. Please keep, please, I beg of you, don't, don't stop. Oh, don't stop. Please keep going. Please, I love it. I love it. Please keep talking. Speaking of weirding out. So this was a, a cooking live he did. I couldn't tell y'all. It's uh, last year sometime. And I don't remember what was happening in the moment, but there was something happening. I think I had started a new series. Usually when I start a new series, then he'll he'll come out and then he'll start trying to retell. After a while, he, first he tried to ignore me, hoping that I get tired. <laughs> and then when he realized I'm going to be relentless, then he'll like try to tell the lunch machine story and say, I see why he because they like why he keep outing you why he keep reporting on you see I don't know well you know what it really is let me tell you this story so this is this is one of the moments also he's trying to read and drag me um in this piece of it where's Lavelle huh where's my ex from 20 where's my ex now all I done told y'all about our situation our friendship now I'm just the ex 
creating a narrative. Many years ago, why hip Lavelle with them baby men? Where he at? Huh? Y'all should have got me started. Oh, you know what? I wasn't even doing anything. I wasn't doing any videos on him around that time. He was into it with somebody else. I'm not sure who it was, but he randomly decided to bring me up because sometimes that happens as well. He misses me. He misses the content. And I think I hadn't put out something in maybe four months or more. And he missed me. He missed the content. He missed the attention. And he brought me up out of the blue. I forgot about this. This drinks. Where is LaBelle? Huh? Oh, I always knew that he was Darius Crooks. Now, if you really want me to tell you the tea, I'll tell you the tea. The reason... Let me, let me get this cabbage on first. Hold on. Hold on one second. Y'all know I ain't got no good sense. Okay? Look at me now. Exactly. Okay. But a year ago, you wasn't saying that. I know he pissed off. So the year ago that he's talking about is in 2021 when this uh, the article I just read, the Black Enterprise article and all the other stuff that was happening, him being uh, exposed <laughs> on every platform. He, he, he thought his life was falling apart and he was able to weather the storm and he thinks that he is completely out of the storm and that that'll never happen again to him. So that's what he's like. Y'all was hating me then. Y'all wasn't with me then. You know, now he's victorious in his mind. Uh, and then he's getting ready to close out. Now, this is the key little piece <laughs> that I found hilarious. He's shutting down the lives because he was doing a cooking live on all his platforms, the IG lies, the Facebook and the TikTok. And he was closing down each one. And before he hit that last one, it recorded him talking about me. Just briefly. Y'all know I ain't got no good sense. Okay? Look at me now. Exactly. Okay. But a year ago, you wasn't saying that. Mm -hmm. I know he pissed off. LaBelle. Oh. And asked me, do I... Um, well, I so it was like, and asked me if I care. So I'm like, he was purposefully trying to like poke the bear so to speak i don't even think i responded to that i didn't i didn't put nothing out i don't let him control me like that um the person the lady you heard in the background was crystal his head the hag in charge Arr. so that was crystal back there cheerleading as she normally does being the lap dog from what i heard word on the street people have been in my inbox saying that Crystal and Crooks went out to dinner together, I guess, with Corey. Um, Corey from the Three Kings the other day or yesterday or something. So supposedly Crystal is around again. Like I told that person, don't necessarily surprise me because I can see Crystal really begging to try to get back into the fold with Darius Crooks. But what I can guarantee her is that she's going to be out again at some point in the future. And she's going to get hurt worse the next time around because whatever happened that they didn't talk for four to five months, Darius Crooks will never see her the same again. On top of that, actually, LaQuinty is gone now. So whatever gap he was going to have LaQuinty filling, he needs Crystal is what I'm what I'm saying. And I told y'all in another video, the only way that Crystal will end up back in his world is if he needs her. He still needs her for whatever. Once he's done, he's going to be done. So it's still going to break up. They might be, it might be temporary. I mean, it's going to be temporary. They might be back together on some level, or he could just be entertaining her on some level. But he doesn't really like LaQuinty. I've heard some horrible, the horrible things he's said about her. Um, and so he's using her. Bree yourself, where you been, friend? You talking about some weight. LaQuinty gone, child? Yes. We talked about this on. Um, was that Monday, y'all? I forgot what day. Yeah, she been gone. Well, she left. She was officially gone on Monday. I left y'all yesterday, the last time we... Okay, so this was Darius Crooks doing his another IG lies. Remember, I know y'all get lost. Y'all dizzy from all these. He does these multiple times a day. So there are hundreds, I'm sorry, hundreds of thousands of these. <laughs> um, So this one, he's at a restaurant. This is off the heels of... When he was dating Jerome, not Jeremy, but Jerome, the, the bumpy face ex, when he was dating him and he had did that fake 
PSA that they had broke up because of harassment and I was bullying them. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> um, this is the next day. And so Darius Crooks is talking about that. People are asking about Jerome, but for some reason, uh, he also wanted to explain supposedly why I'm harassing them, which never happened, y'all. It never happened. <laughs> what I did was clap back when I got harassed, but never did I reach out harassing. Like, this is not, I don't troll people on the internet. It's like, I'm grown. I was born in the 70s. The internet didn't exist until I was in my 20s. Like, I don't, I don't troll the internet. <laughs> I will clap the fuck back, but I don't troll the internet. We're on here. I posted a video. Um, so if you missed, I don't know how you missed it because the views are insane and the messages and the emails are insane. Okay, you guys are absolutely awesome. So thank you for the support. I do appreciate it. So um, where do we even start? Okay. Um, Lavelle, who I haven't seen in over 15 years, has been relentless. So this is just a very quick clip. Uh, I do have the full clip because I and I actually did a video of you're interested, um, even after you watch this, where I did a whole breakdown of this fake breakup. Uh, but this is a clip of Darius Crooks doing the fake PSA where he's crying. Well, he ain't never really cried, but the fake red eyes and he's reading the script about how i harassed him and broke up his relationship <laughs> so every time i think about it i'm like this girl is this a walking soap opera just created it a narrative out of the blue went to the internet and had hundreds of thousands of people viewing it and jumping in her dms to give their condolences and say no don't leave jerome over him uh veil is just hateful he miserable he he just don't have no life don't let him ruin y'all relationship like what <laughs> this is hilarious <laughs> so anyway this is him doing the fake psa uh i got to put the poll have y'all uh have you seen this before uh we can do a watch party on the long i forgot how long it is i don't know if it's like 10 minutes long but i only have a couple seconds here this one spreading lies about me. He's done. Hold on. Hope we can go a little further. Here we go. I posted a video. Um, so if you missed, I don't know how you missed it because the views are insane and the messages and the emails are insane. Okay, you guys are absolutely awesome. So thank you for the support. I do appreciate it. So um, where do we even start? Okay. Um, Alex Lavelle, who I haven't seen in over 15 years, has been relentless on spreading lies about me. He's done numerous videos demeaning me, demeaning my character, which I'm okay with. However, he has realized that since he can't get to me, he has now attacked Jerome. For the past few weeks, he's been cyberbullying Jerome and spreading lies, speaking negatively about his appearance. He's never met Jerome. How huh? So are the stories true? Are they false? I don't know because I don't know what stories there are. You have to realize I have never watched one video of his. I hate his voice. My ex Lavelle, who I haven't. So let's just get the, I guess. So that was Crook saying, now, of course, it was much longer, the PSA. Um, but then the, the other part of the video was him saying he has never watched my content. He won't even click on it, uh, because he hates the, <laughs> he hates the sound of my voice yet. He can recite a ton of issues that I've said over these years, literally verbatim. I'm like, huh? I, I meant to show y'all yesterday that I have went over to the three Kings website. Uh, and I forgot that was going to be a part of the show yesterday. I was going, we were going to revisit the website and see if there were any changes. Well, come to find out, remember I kept saying every time I would go to the website, Darius Crook's face was cut off and I was laughing at it. <laughs> like I was like, oh, I get a little chuckle out of it. Why when I go, went back yesterday, y'all, they had fixed it. <laughs> I said, they fixed that because of me. I know you fixed that because of me. Because it was up there like that for weeks. And all of a sudden when I say it, it gets fixed. <laughs> Girl.
and a bunch of other, like a ton of other stuff over time. That's why I sometimes do what I do to manipulate the situation. Like when people ain't getting paid, we are, actually, I meant to mention that first and I forgot to put it in my notes. We already have people, take that down for a second. We already have people in Darius Crook's lives saying that they have not gotten their refunds for the three kings and they haven't heard anything about refunds. So we are on refund watch officially. If you hear anything about lack of refunds for the three kings never tour, let me know. Hit me up in the DMs. Send me any screenshots you have and we will report on it and air this bit out. <laughs> so let me know. Uh, but so far, I only saw that one. I haven't been on like the exposed groups and Twitter uh, today. So I don't know if it's more out there, but I am uh, paying attention to that. Refund watch. Yes, uh, <laughs> DeAndra uh, Boyd. Refund watch. Yes. <laughs> the big elephant in the room is Jerome. So let's just hit that on the head, right? Um, the last video that you saw, uh, which was yesterday, I posted a video saying that I had broken up with Jerome because of really the attacks that are on him now because he's associated with me. So you have people who hate, we know this, right? People who hate me, right? They just don't like me. The ball has bounced from accusation to accusation. So at first I was a well, I didn't pay my employees. Then I was scamming people. Then I was doxing. Then I was sexually abusing women. <laughs> then I was, you know, sexually abusing black. The ball has bounced so many times that it is what it is. So these people, they don't like me. And so he, he loves this part. Like, again, he, he has said, I create the narrative. This is part of him creating the narrative. He likes to say. Man, they can't make up their mind what I did. The ball keeps bouncing. Bitch, you've done it all. <laughs> That's what we're saying. <laughs> Just because somebody didn't say that you scammed with the uh, your investors with the cupcake gallery and you didn't pay your employees at, you know, at the, all the restaurants and you um, had a fraudulent credit repair um, business and you uh, had a trap, illegal trap bakery in the state of Georgia, uh, in Atlanta, and you ship out, uh, don't ship out the products, and it's a Ponzi scheme cookware, um, um, direct ship business you got. All of it's true. <laughs> we ain't saying, oh, no, no, it's this instead. No, now we talking about, it's, no, that didn't happen. Now we talking about, no, all of it, girl, all of it, and you know that. But they don't know that the flying monkeys, they can't make up their mind what you did. It ain't one thing. It's a decade plus long laundry list of stuff. Some of the stuff we don't even know. This is the stuff we do know that we talk about. Right. Uh, Claudia is saying the ball going to keep bouncing as long as those scams keep bouncing. Exactly. Really, you can't get to me. You feel me? Like. They tried to get to Quentin and Ramon, who are actually right here, by the way. So I'm not saying anything that they don't hear. There's Quentin, there's Ramon, okay? Both of who are gone now. <laughs> Q got, he got rid of Q first, Quentin. He been gone about a year almost now. Ramon, I guess y'all was saying he, he got he got the ax, of, uh, I guess, a few weeks or a month or so ago. I think when I was out of town, so I got some uh, close uh, just a few weeks ago. Neither one of them there. Vouching for them, sitting there cackling and laughing at the people getting scammed when they was getting a paycheck. Now, now let's see you laugh because you didn't got the same treatment as everybody else. Um, we're in Pittsburgh for Donna with Darius Cooks tomorrow and Sunday. And then we next week we'll be in Memphis. Memphis, right? Next week? Nashville? Yeah. Memphis next week. Um, it was in New York last week. What up, everybody? Um, so because they can't get to me at all, um, they're now trying to attack people who are like close to me and close around me. So obviously Jerome is up on the list. So we Jerome, who's no, uh, Jerome is, uh, Darius Crooks. Um, let me stop. G Darius Crooks is X. Um, and I'm only dragging him a little bit cause he called himself trying to drag me when I hadn't, hadn't done anything to him. Um, but yes. Okay. Darius Crooks, bumpy face X 
because I just reminded myself of what he how he tried to come for me. Um, is no longer in the picture either. None of the people involved in this, the two sitting next to him and the person he talking about don't even exist in his world no more. Who is the common denominator, y'all? Who is the put it in the chat? Who is the common denominator? Put your favorite name from Scampa, uh, Scamelto, Scam Yonce, uh, Darius Legion. Put who is the common denominator of the issues with all these relationships? Andrea's perspective says, is his food good? I've answered this question a multitude of times, but you may not have heard it. It's as good as anybody's Sunday cooking. He is a kitchen cook. That is it. He is not a chef. It ain't amazing. It's okay. And if you're not used to uh, really high quality foods, you might think it's pretty amazing. But it's just, it's just good. It's just okay. It ain't spectacular. He had so what happened was um his personal information had got posted um his address where he works all that information is out and you know everybody ain't built for this public life i can handle it you feel me i ain't got nothing to hide all right the unfortunate thing like i said was that it's my ex um who it's my ex pay attention pay attention because it's coming up i haven't seen in probably about 15 years. Now, I'm going to tell you why he upset. Draw in your leaning ear. If I was you, this is about to be good, child. If you at work, put your headphones on. If you got an office, close your door. All right. If you watching the stories, put it on pause. Okay. So, so many people are like, what is his deal? Why is Lavelle, um, his, he goes by randomness of Vail on, uh, YouTube. Now, I've not seen one YouTube video. You won't get a click, a like, a view for me. God damn it. Okay. I, I won't get a like, a clue, a, 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 a like, a click, a view from him, but he knows the old channel name. If I don't watch somebody, there's quite a few people I don't watch. I don't remember their channel names. I've seen nothing, but. Um, I heard snippets because um, there was some commentary about this lady named Dr. Blue on Instagram, I mean on uh, Facebook, and she, um, Dr. Blue gave lots of commentary, right? So anyway. The reason he's mentioning Dr. Blue, who I have an issue with, um, ooh, and I've, I've just kept it real clean, but Dr. Blue, some of y'all know of Dr. Blue, but she lost a, a hell of a lot of respect for me from me and i had just started kind of listening to a little bit of her because i think she was talking about tim norman them at a point um her commentary she did two videos on me using my um intellectual property using my content thankfully she was smart enough to only use the audio because i would have struck her ass but um she did commentary and called herself dragging me and calling me a bad friend because of the fact that I have been doing my content on a sociopathic, pathological uh, narcissist who has and continues to scam thousands of people. I'm the person who's wrong. And her perspective was because Darius and Crooks and I was, because uh, again, she only went off one there. So I think she's a D, D hack too, flying monkey. She used her platform to do flying monkey behavior. Didn't once reach out to me and ask, hey, can I talk to you about this? I'm, I'm thinking about doing content. I want to get your perspective or your side as well. Right. She's a know-it-all. Thank you. And don't know shit. <laughs> and she made a fool out of herself. And it ain't going to age well. So keep them goddamn videos up so we can see how much of a fool you are. So anyway, she calls herself dragging me, saying I'm just not a good friend. How I'm an out people, uh, somebody who I was friends with, or uh, uh, my ex, and all this other bullshit ass narrative, without having the full context of information, and only going off what a gaslighting sociopath has told her or says on their platform. So that's why he's promoting Doctor Blue, and probably what she wanted anyway, because she's still trying to get likes and views. Um, that's why he's promoting her because she's sided with him without getting the full story and the shit she was saying i was like girl you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about 
but I know how YouTube works, so I wasn't finna get her no, <laughs> I wasn't finna give her give her what she really wanted. She's even talking about some I should come over there and uh uh she loves my um my graphics, my commercials, and all that, and I should help her out. And but bitch, not when you on the internet dragging me without ever talking to me first and trying to see my perspective of the truth. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's why he mentioned her. And she's still on my shit list. <laughs> well, his job. I forgot I'm not on Patreon. <laughs> job is fine. We we we've secured that. His job is fine. Ain't got no issues at work. So if you watching and you trying to tear him down at work, it's not gonna work. Okay. Find some other angle. Come after me. I'm sitting right here. All right. Um. So here's what happened. So Lavelle and I dated. Um. I was 19. I'm 40 now. Okay. About to be 41. Let's tell you how long this go back. But we dated uh, 19 to 21, all right? That's 20 years ago, child. Let me say that one more time. We dated from the time I was 19 until I was 21. That is 20 years ago. I just want to paint the picture for you, all right? I know sometimes y'all don't hear all the details and whatnot. I just want to paint the picture with very broad strokes so that you understand the context, okay? Right, and pay attention to the context clues. He says he paints with very broad strokes, which means leaving a lot of the truth <laughs> gaps for the truth to seep out and keep only the lies. Pay attention. Somebody say I paint with broad strokes as I'm telling you the truth. Girl, that means you're leaving out a hell of a lot of shit. And on top of that, and I'm going to get off here in a minute because I'm starting to curse too much. <laughs> but And on top of that, he is saying that we hadn't talked in, or we hadn't dated in 20 years. That part is true. But he's also trying to make it sound like we hadn't had any association in 20 years, which was not true. This was only eight years ago at the point of him recording that. <laughs> so we hadn't talked in like eight years. <laughs> Come on, bitch. <laughs> we had been friends through that after that breakup. <laughs> or after I dumped him. So, um, we broke up separate ways, whatever. We broke up. No, I dumped your ass. I ghosted you when you were driving to Jersey for that, uh, kitty cooking camp or whatever the hell that thing was. The LGBT thingamajig cooking camp. I dumped you. I ghosted you when you were sending me those emails because you didn't have a good phone signal. I wasn't returning those goddamn, uh, messages at all. And I was trying to slowly let you go because you was a narcissist and kept me on the phone i remember you was driving on the road because you know you had me talk to you the whole goddamn trip the whole 10 11 hour drive and then every once in a while he'd you know take a call and be like oh let me call so and so or so and so calling i get a little reprieve i get a little break from her oh yapping crazy ass so uh during one of those phone calls and i was going through some stuff in life again i wasn't no scrub he was the 19 year old. I was a successful 20 some year old with multiple properties, multiple cars, <laughs> two businesses. I was doing it. Anyway, she tried to act like I'm some scrub. But anyway, he we're on the phone. The case may be. And in that, we start on the song. We're on the phone and it's it had been happening over some time period where I'm like, He's not even paying attention to who I, what's going on in my world. I'm over this. It's always about him. And he just yabba, 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 just like he do on his IG lives at night. Same thing. And I was like, you know, I'm over him. I'm, I'm through with him. And so I ghosted him. <laughs> like, I was just like, oh, I'm going to pull away. We get this two weeks. I think it was a week and a half or two weeks that he would be there where we, he don't have a good phone signal. So I ain't have to deal with her on the phone every day, all day. And I was like, I'm going to use that time to build some distance. And that's what I did. So when he came back, he realized we <laughs> that I had broke up with him. <laughs> you remember that, Crooks, don't you? Why are you talking about some we broke up, we parted ways? Girl, I dumped you. I ghosted you. Quit telling parts of the truth. Just tell the whole truth. Because that part don't work for her narrative that I'm supposed to be some love sick stalker who, who feels like the one who got away. Right, Uncle Ruckus. I'm supposed to be upset that Uncle Ruckus got away. Well, <laughs> I was supposed to be upset about that. What? Oh, hold on. Okay. I'm saying the comment, but I can't see it on the screen because it's 
uh, my play button covers. Maintain right. some semblance of a friendship after we had broken up. It was strictly platonic trust. I'm gonna let this part play. Then I'll explain it. Let's tell you how long this go back. But we dated uh, 19 to 21. All right, that's 20 years ago, child. Let me say that one more time. We dated from the time I was 19 until I was 21. That is 20 years ago. I just want to paint the picture for you, all right? I know sometimes y'all don't hear all the details and whatnot. I just want to paint the picture with very broad strokes so that you understand the context, okay? So um, we broke up separate ways, whatever the case may be. We maintained some semblance of a friendship after we had broken up. It was strictly platonic, trust me when I tell you, okay? And so, um... I'm sorry, I can't help, but it's so much gaslighting. Is a, is a semblance of a friendship uh, somebody you see multiple times a week? Sometimes it was five, six times a week. Uh, travel with, solo trips. It was he and I. We went to Atlanta together. He was doing some cooking at some some gay guy's house. Uh, we went to Miami together, just he and I. We went on cruises with groups of friends. We were roommates when we did those cruises um, where he was <laughs> trying to talk to that uh, old ugly man. You remember that old ugly man on the boat that you, we was just baffled. We like, and there's big ass curled up. We um, we go up to the adult area uh, on the cruise ship where they got the lounge chairs, but like the cabana wraparound thing, my jigs, where you can just like an eggshell looking thing, half eggshell. We walking past, me and the other friends, we just, you know, laughing, talking, just walking around the boat. We walk past, we see Darius Crooks there laid up with this old, ugly man who was part of the the, the, the larger group that we came, uh, that we were there with. It was a gay cruise thing. Look. Oh, you saw all his daddy issues. He's like, boy, you, you about three times bigger than that man, and you all hugged up up in him in the fetal position. Oh, crooks. You remember that? Because we were laughing because we were like, oh, my God, he was so ugly. And he was uh, from the guy was from New York. But Darius Crooks act like he was head over heels. That's one thing about him, again, his psychology. He, fought, he used to fall in love like that and then be done within three weeks. Like, as soon as he fall hard, it's love bombing. He would love bomb. He would fall into him. Get the person into them. Next thing you know, you know, is you think like, wow, they move quick. And the next thing you know, he done dumped the person as soon as they fall in love with him. Within about a month and a half, two months. We're like, damn. And he's like, I don't like him no more. He too this, he too that. Damn, but just like you just rolled up in the fetal position under up under him on a cruise boat. <laughs> Spending the night, like, cause we, again, we were roommates. Again, how am I some obsessed ex-boyfriend? We on cruises together. You my roommate. You spending nights with the old ugly man from New York. You ain't even coming to the room at night. And then when I get a chance to, oh, I had this fine dude. So I date fine dude. Except with the exception of crooks. Everybody have a little off one. He the off one. This guy from, oh, I ain't going to say his name. <laughs> you know y'all from New York. I miss you, boy. But anyway, from New York, um, he was an older guy too. Just a little older than me. Fine, swag, all that good stuff. I'm sitting there trying to, we finally, you know, I was a little bashful. So we finally connecting. We starting to hang out. We go to the room. We go on the balcony. He and I is getting closer than close. And then Darius Crooks finally come his ass back. I'm like, nigga, you, don't, you ain't been in the room in three days. You been spending the night with old New York crusty dude. What you back for as soon as I get my friend up in here? And my friend, he got a roommate too. So. I almost feel like Crooks did that on purpose. <laughs> Hateful bitch. <laughs> but I'm supposed to be the one who's uh, psycho. Love sick. What? <laughs> anyway. we gonna, Just this last part, and then I'm going to read some comments and we're getting out of here. Uh, just I'm talking about. I really, the point in showing this is that Darius Crooks felt the same way about me that I felt about him during our last years of knowing each other. We were just friends, platonic friends. There was no interest in each other at all on that in that way. So why I'm now the jealous ex is beyond me 20 years later. How we get from dating for two years, friends for nearly a decade, 
And then you fast forward, and now I'm the jealous ex. I, that is just beyond me. And you're saying here that we were just platonic for all those years, but you have reduced our deep brotherhood friendship to a semblance of a friendship. Girl, as much as I was at your house, all the stuff I did helped you with your first YouTube, with your YouTube channel, filming every week, coming over every Sunday, going shopping during the week. You call me and say you want to get breakfast. That's a semblance of a friendship? Lying ass. You know, I've always been entrepreneurial and I was working on this um, concept. Excuse me, ma'am. Can I ask one small question, favor? Do you, the, I know you should, you cut the music down a little bit. Can you touch, maybe just a touch more? Is that possible? No, no, it's not that. We're perfectly fine right here. I just don't want to get my live stream cut off. That's all. I hear you, but we can move you further from the speaker. No, no, no. The, the, you know, the atmosphere is for everybody. Okay. Yes, ma'am. That's, that's fine. We'll leave it where it is. Thank you. All I can do is ask, right? If they come my live off or they mute the live, I'm sorry, y'all. Okay? I know it's almost 4,000 of y'all watching, so my apologies. Okay? Anyway, so um, I asked twice, child. They, they told me no both times. What can you do? Okay? I asked twice. Quit laughing. And what can you do? I asked him. He's done talking about that this situation. We're going to continue with this particular video. This one, well, I can look now because I'm, uh, it's an hour and 43 minutes. So we've only done, <laughs> well, we did two minutes of it. <laughs> so tomorrow we'll continue with that. Um, and then we'll get into like him telling the lunch machine, his versions of the story. But I just wanted to set the tone that he's been lying about ex-boyfriend. Yes, technically. Yes. 20 years ago. But how are you going to ignore two years of dating and then a whole decade of friendship? To me, that kind of squashes. And on top of that, he was 19 years old, like, and a lazy late. Like, all those things, there's no, I, you know how when you break up with somebody, you feel like, oh, my God, I feel a void. Oh, I miss them. It was, it was not that. <laughs> it was not that. So it's hard for me to feel. It doesn't. It felt like a friend you was, it feels, it felt like you start dating somebody and you realize we just should be friends. <laughs> it was that. We just did it for two years. <laughs> we should just be friends. We were cool with each other. We were close. We did. We had fun and all that. But it was like, mm, we should just be friends. Like, and neither one of us said it, I guess. <laughs> That's what it was. So. Right, the entitlement. Uh, that's why I was cutting it off because we'll get into that tomorrow too. Him asking them to turn down their music just so he can be on his live stream when uh, I've heard that he blasts people out of his uh, establishment too, that the music will be extremely loud. We got a hell of a lot of start comments, but I'm going to see how I feel. We see how many I get through. Y'all hang if y'all can hang. If you can't, I understand it's getting late as hell for most of y'all. Um, have you seen Crook's Fake breakup PSA. 58% of you said no. 42% of you had seen it. So we'll watch. We'll watch that um, maybe before we're done with this particular trilogy. Uh, okay. So we have done that. I will. Um, Justin Mason is probably from way earlier. Yeah, that's from seven. <laughs> you gone by now. I know Justin. Justine. Uh, what happened to Chef Carmen? Uh, I do know the answer. Uh, unfortunately, I got to kind of stick on the subjects that I'm on. But um, I can, if people want to hear about that, this ain't, most people over here don't quite know who Chef Carmen is. But I could talk about that. Um, it won't happen during this trilogy, though. Uh, which show his, which shows his people could care less that they purchase tickets made traveling and shelter arrangements and he canceled because they aren't enough for him loyal to him or not not enough yeah yeah very true thank everyone for the super chats i think i've read all of those uh has Vale talked about the new live yet with sister silver back in green throwing jeremy under the bus then dragging him off the cliff. I don't, I don't know. I haven't talked about that because I have no idea what that's about. Uh, Tasha 50, thank you so much. I don't know if I saw your uh, super chat earlier. 
Uh, wasn't the friendship longer than the relationship? Yes, Delilah, absolutely. Again, two years. And I think we both rounded up. I really think it was about a year and a half or something of friendship. I'm going to say of dating. And then the rest was um, all friendship. Platonic. Platonic. Thank you so much, uh, Tarnisha. Uh, thanks. Vi oh, I'm clicking the wrong thing. <laughs> I'm like, why are they showing up on the screen? Uh, hold on. Let me find you. Here you go. Oh, thank you. Whoever put that up. Tarnisha, um, thank you so much. Uh, thanks for the great live veil. Thank you. And when I watch this back, I'm probably going to pull it down. <laughs> I'm going to leave it up. I don't even care. It, it don't really work with my brand that much. I try not to be too ruthless, but this crazy bitch deserves it at this point. It's just ridiculous. Uh, you definitely don't look older than he. My goodness, I thought he was older. <laughs> Looking like a grandpa from the 1970s. Right, exactly, exactly. And that's that's that hard life, though. That's living that that dark life that has him looking like that. It's not easy to say I was scammed or uh, conned. Uh, I applaud you, Vail, Vail B. Yeah, I mean, I'm OK with saying that because I feel like and this situation and other stuff, too, it's not he's not the only person to ever do something or get over on me in, in this way. Absolutely. In such a such a such a way like this to be to kind of be a wolf in sheep's clothing. Yes, he's been, uh, especially because of how long it was, knowing somebody over a decade and then them to do that. Yes, he's been the only person that I experienced in that way, but I've had other people scam and do stuff, but I use it as um, a testimony or an example to others. So other people can live vicariously through me and learn what to look out for when it comes to predators. I'm totally okay with sharing those stories of times I've gotten taken advantage of. How many times did he get evicted? Nobody wanted him. Um, so he got evicted. When I first met him, he got evicted. Within a few months of me knowing him, when we were actually this one when we were dating, he got evicted from Huron. From Huron, he moved over to Central Avenue. He eventually got evicted from Central Avenue. From Central, he moved over to Lake Street, right off of uh, well, Central and Lake. He ended up, and I like that apartment, that little part. It was a basement garden unit. Uh, he got evicted from that one. Oh, then he went over to Kingston on the south side. He moved up. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Was it Kingston then? I could, I always get the, the order confused. He went from, I think he went from Lake Street to Warren. Or did he go from Kingston to one? But anyway, he ended up in King on Kingston. Yeah, I think he went from Lake Street to Kingston. And that was out south. I was actually happy about that because he was then moving closer to me. Like, still, I lived in the South Birds, but it was closer than going way to the west side. Um, he got evicted from Kingston. Oh, geez, we had four already. Then he moved to, if I'm not mistaken, he did move back to the West Side on Warren. Cause then it was like in the, it was mysterious to me because it was like, I think I hadn't talked to him in a week or two or something. Or just, yeah, something like that. And then all of a sudden he was like, I think I was going over for something. And he's like, oh yeah, my new address is this. And I was like, how you end up on the West Side? Wait, what happened to the other apartment? <laughs> so that was fine. Then he went from Warren to his last apartment in Chicago, which was the one that G was the landlord of. And then that's the one he left and the seal. That was six. He wasn't evicted from that last one, but he abandoned it. <laughs> he had a roommate. He just left. Um, so had he had an apartment <laughs> like by himself, he would have been evicted from it because he just ran off. Um, yeah, so he ran off to New York. So he got five evictions that I know of. And then in, in Jersey, I did a story on this guy who um, his ex-landlord who had posted on was it Lipstick Alley or something? The whole story about his drama with Darius Crooks as Darius being a tenant, giving him bogus uh, checks and um, paying him and then stopping the check and all kind of stuff. And then damaging the apartment when he finally got Darius Crooks out of there. And he really in, in, in uh, New Jersey, he was saying uh, him doing those bounce checks and stuff. He actually could have had Darius Crooks arrested, but he was giving him grace. So many people have given Darius Crooks grace. I gave him grace. 
So many people have given him grace. That's how a lot of people are like, if he did all this, why he ain't in jail? Why you ain't sue him? Blah, blah, blah. Everybody giving him grace. Or they don't feel like going through suing somebody over a few hundred dollars that he stole. Or in my case, thousands he stole. But back then he was broke. <laughs> he wasn't, y'all, rich. He rich. My master rich. He wasn't that Darius Crooks. He wasn't even Darius Crooks. He was Darius T. Williams with the everyday cooking platform. I got a video on that, um, the landlord from um, from New Jersey. Just for y'all ish and giggles, for those of you who are night owls, bring it up for you. Put it in the chat. Put the link in here for y'all. Get y'all something to watch after this. We're about to get off in a minute. I mean, we're full of receipts over here. Full of receipts. Um, oh, let me go to my own channel. Hold on. Channel. If I say I'm going to put it up later, I always forget. So I'm like, let me just do it now. That's it. Let me just go to my videos. And some people be like, he do so many videos on Darius Crooks. Mm-hmm. What's your point? <laughs> I also do a ton of other videos too, but like if we want to, we want to go with that narrative. It's fine with me. It ain't gonna stop me from doing it. Here we go. It's called a series. Did did you did you write into uh, NBC and say all y'all do is show episodes of Friends? Y'all obsessed with uh, the show Friends? It's called a fucking series. <laughs> you write into your TV network. Why are you always playing the Cosby Show? It's a fucking series. Why they'll be always doing videos on Darius Crooks is a fucking series. <laughs> it's like the TV show. <laughs> Duh. So they're going to keep coming. Oh, Darius Crooks is live sending signals for the flying monkeys to unfollow Jeremy. Okay, let me play this real quick for y'all. Y'all know I got work to do. I got I to gotta keep our uh, content flowing. Let me. Oh, I should have. I didn't bring in none of my. Okay, I'll play this one though. I didn't bring in none of my uh, other videos. Give me a second. Turn you to a dog like a keto yeah. And expose to a cat like a cheetah like They smoke my partner like reef Dime lo porque o no And you know me gente must really need Jesus They shed real blood I never seen the crypt and I believe it It's too easy Too Too easy I can do this with my eyes closed It's too easy Too It's too easy I can do this with my eyes closed Seen it. I seen it. 
y'all just talk, don't live it. And just took that route, that scenic. And I'm so outspoken like reason. Jimmy Neutron boy, young G's. And I'm a self made man. All right, I'm back. I just went through the star comments real quick. Uh, I was looking for, I thought I had questions. Uh, so I really only want to start questions. So we only had one that was star. <laughs> the other 20 something were comments. Um, Love B and J is saying, Vel, I have to know, did Crook snore? He always claims he never snored. I hate to disappoint you. Uh, I love B M N J. Uh, but Darius Crooks was not a snorer. Uh, he was actually a pretty quiet sleeper. <laughs> surprise, surprise, with all that. <laughs> yeah, I think he gets it all out through the middle of the day. All the snorting he does through the day clears his sinuses enough that he sleeps at night and he, he was not a snorer. You would think, though, and he was big, way bigger, way bigger. He hadn't had no bypasses or any of those uh, sort of things. Um, if you asked the question earlier, it didn't get starred by the moderator. So if you could ask it again, I'll answer it before we get off real quick, but you got to type quick, <laughs> but, um, yes, he didn't, he did not, um, snow snore. I've seen him saying that and people like, can't believe him because he lies about everything. That's something he not like. Well, I don't know about today because I don't, you know, I wouldn't even want to know today. Oh, I, I think I see your, uh, old, old question. Uh, why you care about his shoes? <laughs> what? <laughs> he, but he, if I remember correctly, is a 14 or 15, something like that. It's like, cause I wear a size 12 and his feet was like still much bigger than mine. So I think he a 15. I think it's 15. Thank you, Renee S friend saying, uh, this live was fire. Yes. Did I torch it? If I torched it. Put torch or flame emojis in the chat if I torched it. We ain't even done. It's burning in the back, but I ain't done. I want to put some more gasoline on it. Can I put some more gasoline on it? I still got a couple gallons of gasoline left. <laughs> we didn't get to it. <laughs> but we know it's real. <laughs> we know it's real. All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all. Uh, thank y'all for helping me get through this because I really didn't want to do it. <laughs> but we will be back tomorrow so that we can go ahead and tighten this up. And then maybe Monday, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I got so much to cover, but I was going to say maybe we'll do a Q&A style. I'll see how it feels as we go through it. Maybe uh, after tomorrow, depending on how much you left or whatever, maybe we'll do a Q&A because I, I know people got a lot of questions and stuff. So. Uh, and you probably have even more after I break all this down. So anyway, with that, um, make sure to have a good night and um, take care and be blessed. And we will see you. Um, I'm trying to be smooth with pulling up my assets. Um, I will see you tomorrow. Same time. Same bat channel. Uh, 715 Central, 815 Eastern. All right. Y'all have a good night. Peace. Darius Cooks, also known as your local scammer. You are, you know, you gay, growing up in Chicago. You just end up being with a tribe of people. I don't know. It's really hard to explain. I, it might be different now, but when I was growing up, there were crews. We had people we hung with, right? Anyway, and I hung with people like, you remember Calvin, Lavelle, you know, those are people that I used to hang with back in the day, and you see what happened now especially with randomness of veil. We ain't heard hide nor have him, have we? We ain't heard hide nor have him, have we? Just come to think of it, let me not bring his name up because let me tell you something. He probably, child, he ready to, where's the expose? Where is the expose?